Let's get right into whatever Jacob wants us to. Oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> no, no, stop. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? Can't be doing that. <laughs> That'll get cut. From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. We got some big news today. Ba, ba, ba. Let's get right into it. And now broadcasting from the churn, that guy's Dr. Jim Jobin. I'm yeah. Nick Tangerman. It's time for some Pod Therapy. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to an error on the website of Best of Las Vegas, it has been revealed that I won! Hooray! Oh, you got it! He I did. got it! Mental Health Clinic Gold, bitches! Finally! You've got the, gold. You've got the trifecta. I Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I've got two silvers and a gold. Three years, I've gotten a plaque, I got another one, and this I'm is really it! really sad you didn't go to bronze this tippy, year. Tippy, tippy, uh, yeah. top! And it's because of all of you wonderful people who did the damn thing and got out there and voted every day, every device. You did this. You got me over the finish line. And I beat uh, some pretty good competitors here. I beat a psychiatry yeah, office. Talk about that. Okay, so I beat a psychiatry office, and that's fine. Like, that, that's legitimate. Good for them. But Tilton's therapy got in there again. I know. <laughs> they got third. That's, that's like the sports, the, like the physical therapy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're the still winning. Therapy. Fantastic. They're beating a lot of Fantastic. fine institutions, and they're getting third. And what, just, what is this? Uh, what's the sub? The sub mental thing? health clinic. But what, what's it's the, under what, health what's and the beauty? Thing? Okay. So if you go to the website as we're saying this right now, and probably as this airs, you will you will not see it. So what happened was. They're supposed to not announce this until December 11th, and so they got a hold of they get a hold of the winners about a month and a half in advance and go, "Hey, congratulations, you won. Here's what you won." And then they say, "You know, would you like to do any merch or anything like that? Like, we want to make sure that gets to you kind of as this is rolling out, um, because you're going to want to announce it, and that's fine." Uh-huh. So I'm like, "Great." But they say, "Hey, you know, we we don't want you to go around and talk about this. Like, keep your mouth shut." And it's like, "Okay, Which cool." You did. I did. I absolutely did. He both yep. kept his mouth shut and is now not keeping his mouth shut. Well, <laughs> in fairness, here's what happens. So it leaks because on their so like people are just going about their business, and then some of our fans are on the Discord, and then suddenly Anonymous is like, "Uh, hey, everybody, everybody, meet me in the lounge right now." Because something happened, and everybody's like, oh, geez, what is this? Like, Anonymous okay? Like, what's going on? She win the lottery? And then, of course, she just puts it up. Like, there it is, screen share. Here it is, the website. It's right there. It's on their website. She was going into the 2021 winners to, like, see if there was a certificate or something like that. Because that, she was going to, like, make me a mock-up of one in case I lost. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, just like, here you go, honorable mention. And she gets in there, and it's like, you click on the 2021 winners, and then it's like, Here's the 2022 winners just right there, like on the same page. So it's like, there you go. And so then, of course, everybody's like, oh, my God, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste. So then it's going around and it's like, OK, there it is. Like, it, it's out there, you know. And and so then it was like, hey, look, it's going on to our socials, you know, like yeah. we're not going to keep it a secret. I mean, at this point, it's it's weird if we're not acknowledging it. Yeah. When everybody is saying, hey, we did it. You know, we we right. carried Jim the whole way up this damn mountain. He was heavy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you and know, now he's up there this, and he's not talking about now we, it? Yeah, we put him up there and he just sits there silently in his golden throne, that asshole. So, no, no, no. I will acknowledge it. Uh, you know, at this point, they've, they've violated their own terms by putting it out publicly and it already got noticed in the world. So, can't hide that secret. Uh, and, and I probably shouldn't have uh, spoken to the other two, though. The silver and the bronze. Maybe I yeah, shouldn't have done you. that. Fuck. But you know what? <clears throat> that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine with me. You find yeah. out how you find yeah, out. Jacob and I are okay with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was actually, I, I, I was genuinely happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. Kills me to say it, but Thank I was. Thank you. It was, it was good well, to see you Well, thank you for your support. Win. You voted for me. I, I appreciate did. you. I did. I voted a lot. One of you voted for me. Yes. <laughs> Why are you both looking at me? Yeah. <laughs> Why would we? Uh, I but, went to the site many times. You did. In your defense, <laughs> you navigated all the way to it. Yep. Yeah, there was I a I believe hit I even registered. clicked on it yeah. a couple of times. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, there was a registered hit. He may have hit submit on accident. Yeah, he voted. He oh, never I definitely submitted. did not hit he, submit. Not one <laughs> submit. But I definitely registered a vote yeah. on that page before I hit refresh. But I was, I was happy to see you beat the other people. 
Yeah. Because yeah. that pisses me that off. That was the, yeah, the thorn. An occupational therapy clinic. Yeah, come Getting on, best yeah. mental health clinic. And they still keep getting up there, man. They're still in the third. That is bullshit. So it's pretty rough. That's yeah, bullshit. It's pretty rough. But thank you to everybody who helped and got me this. It is overwhelming. I am so excited. And, of course, we have made merch. Uh, Brogan uh, immediately is funny because back... This was a while back. Uh, we were talking, you know, just about design and, and just Brogan just makes things and just sends them. And, and one day I was like, hey, if I win this thing, it would be really cool to, like, have a cartoon to celebrate it. Could you make me something? And, of course, it is glorious. It's this awesome ass picture of me like wearing a, cool. a like a king's like cape and and like hat, lifting a trophy that says number one and just winning. And then you took that, added a whole bunch of more decor around it, and now it is a shirt and it is merch. It is stickers. It is cups. My mom bought one already. I saw that. It's on the way. I saw that. Our uh, our excited. store all of a sudden got a lot of visitors. Yay! So that was really cool. Oh, that is cool. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. This is oh man. It's it's honestly such a big deal. It is such a big deal because I, I mean I like I took a big risk. I, I dropped my entire advertising budget to get that stupid one click button page. Mm -hmm. And the theory oh, right. of the case was maybe Make if it it's easy. really easy, yeah, then a lot of people yeah, just let me keep clicking it. You know, whatever. This is pretty simple, and so I think it worked. I mean, obviously, yeah. and the listeners carried us over. So thank you, everybody. Um, we can now say that uh, this podcast is co-hosted by the best of Las Vegas. Yeah. 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 We Sorry, can, bud. We, we can, can say that. We can yeah. say it, sadly. But there's yeah, merch. I, I actually, uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to do, but I just don't have the time right now, is I wanted to take, which by the way, you'll notice if you go in the store, Yeah. the 181st best okay. stuff is no longer there. Wow. So I took it all down. That's integrity, my man. It is. And consistency of product placement. Yes. Good for you. So I took it all down. Wow. Well played. But my plan, what I really wanted to do, uh -huh. is take that logo uh -huh. and have like the same picture, but like the one and the eight <laughs> have fallen off. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. And just hanging that would have been I cool. I like this. So then it just says first. First, but best. then there's an eight and a one. First best of Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was my plan. I was going to do it, but then I went into my Adobe Illustrator, uh -huh. and uh, this goes back to when I first started using Adobe Illustrator, uh -huh. and I didn't know all of the shortcuts. Oh. So like I did everything the hardest way possible oh, when designing no. all these graphics. So right now I can't go in and I can't really like I'd have oh, to start over from you scratch. Can't, oh, you can't just I can't just amend edit them. Stuff. That's yeah. a final thing. Yeah. You'd have so I have to it. I'd oh, have to go over and, and redo it. So I really want to do that at some point, but that I just would don't be have the hilarious. Time right now and do it. Um, but I'm also glad that you don't so. have the time to do it because I really like the one you made. Like yeah, that 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 yeah. combination between your work and Brogan's oh, is yeah, glorious. Yeah, I mean, Bro I love it. Brogan's did the hard work. Yeah, 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 I, I, just, yeah, yeah. I really yeah. just Brogan did put all some, the work. Yeah. Put some shit around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it looks really good. I yeah, like it. Like it worked together to make this whole concept pop. So. Congratulations to the artwork um, and me. Hooray. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, who carried me over the finish line. A lot of fun. And, and really quick, just because, um, just to kind of switch gears for a second, because there's a lot of spotlight on you, and I'm, Thanks. I'm feeling yeah, left no, out. Yeah, it's, it's getting weird. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got uh, 13 people signed up so far. It's December 6th. Oh, yeah. And I've got 13 people already signed up All for right. the Pod Therapy Fitness Challenge. Yeah, fitness um, challenge in your pod therapy. I, I feel kind of weird about it because I opened it up on de December 1st. Yeah. So that's a whole month for people to sign up. Yeah. But for those people who signed up on December 1st, it's just crickets. Oh. Because there's nothing happening. Oh, right. Because it doesn't start yeah, until they're January. they're waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything happening right now. But thank you to everybody Is who's already Is there an amount of people up. that could sign up for this that makes your life difficult? Like, too Honestly, many people? No. Okay. Yeah. No, I because I, I put it in a way so that it's already done. Yeah. Like, I don't... There's, um, so I'm, I'm writing some, like, I guess you could call them, like, blogs. Okay. So I'm writing some stuff that I'm going to post on random days throughout. And it's just some reading materials about some different things. Right. right? So that's the only thing I'm still working on yet. But everything as far as, like, the workout and the app and everything is already set. That's all there. So if I have a thousand people sign up for it, it doesn't make my job any harder. Right. 
Okay. It's already done. But do remember, if you sign up to be this a Patreon. This is not true. This is complete <laughs> bullshit. Stop. <laughs> don't. Whatever he's saying right now. Don't ever believe it's Jacob. Not, it's not. It's yeah. $30. Also, I'm sorry if you're a patron. I Jacob know. Has been I understand. But it is some $30. some very libelous sexual things about us. Okay. <laughs> It's at patreon.com slash I think they're only liable if they're negative. That's true. You know what? They, they were very flattering. Yeah, I believe I complimented you. They yeah. were celebratory yeah. sexual yeah. things. <laughs> patreon.com slash therapy yeah. to check out all that stuff. And hear about my marathon interviewing um, to maybe get to talk more about therapy. And, and love get making. To teach. There's that too. Yeah. Lots of uh, interviewing for love making. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because Jacob is a very strict lover. And he requires a very thorough vetting process. <laughs> oh, I mean, I love an interview as much as Nevada State College does. <laughs> I'm pivoting. All right. We got some great That's just questions. Not true. They love interviewing. Uh, lots of interviews. So we I've got some great questions today. We're gonna dive into it. Oh, real quick in case uh Nick sounds different. He's wearing a mask. He's I COVID am. negative, but you know, sick and just being polite. Yeah. yeah. I so, uh I've had a cold. Uh kind of started. Sunday, Sunday, I was just feeling Sunday, terrible. Sunday, Sunday. Monday was even worse. Today is Tuesday, and feeling a lot better. Oh, that's good. We didn't record on Monday, though. Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know if I'd, have, I don't know if I'd have come in. Um, uh, Jim texted us on Sunday, Sunday, yeah. Sunday, and Sunday. asked if we could bump the recording a day. Yep. Uh, which was great because I had completely forgotten that I couldn't record on Monday. <laughs> I forgot that I do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob forgot about it. I wasn't going to be able to. Yeah, I would have just shown so, up. Like, yeah. Uh. So yeah, I think we were both in the same. Like boat. I had like, something oh, else to do God. on Monday night that I had just forgotten about. Uh-huh. Like I'd uh-huh. forgotten about the conflict totally. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, when I first uh-huh. found out about the other thing on Monday night, I was like, "Oh, I got to, I got to talk to the guys." It we'll bump it because it was weeks in advance that yeah. I knew about this. <laughs> I was like, I remember talking to the guys, and I just never did. Yeah, well, <laughs> and then you texted. I was like, Oh, this this oh, is very yeah. fortuitous. You agreed really quickly. Yeah, yeah, like as I hit send, almost there was a message back. Like, yep, that works for me. Yeah, see you guys on Tuesday. Definitely Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad this all worked out. Here we are on a Tuesday. So we got some great questions today. We're going to dive into it. The first one is called taking psycholo. Oh, oh. Uh, by the way, so. If you are listening to this on the main feed on Thursdays, not through the Patreon, there are advertisements that are now scattered over the podcast. We have gotten your feedback. People have said, hey, um, these things are just showing up mid-sentence sometimes, and the audio level could be different than you talking, and it kind of catches me off guard. So I have finally, I think, figured out how to make sure the ads fall during the trivia break, I think that as we are doing it, I can make the ads fall. Okay. So I, I'm, I can do it in post, but I want to try an experiment. Right after I say, you're listening to Pod Therapy, I think we should all hit our coughing mics and get one beat of silence, and I'm pretty sure the ad will fall there. But actually, really? it doesn't matter because I have to do it by hand anyway. So never mind. Say, yeah, I, Disregard that, that idea. That part I have to do it in all. post. <laughs> never mind. But if I do it right, this episode, people should only hear ads during the trivia breaks. So we will see if I get it right. Okay. Of course, if you're listening through Patreon, none of this matters, and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. First question. Taking psychological... Buy tires from us at Big O' Tires. <laughs> Come on down to Big O' Tires. We got Big O' Savings on our Big O' Tires. Come on over to Big O' Tires. Well, that's going to be what happens all episode, friends. Uh, <laughs> buckle up. I can't edit that out. He literally controls the knobs and dials. First question, taking psychological tests from Colin. Hey, kids, I have questions. I'm 22. My pronouns are he and him. I first went into therapy when I was in fifth grade. I've always been in my own head more than the real world, and I've been predisposed to being melancholy as long as I can remember. I've been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and sort of diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I'm taking Lexapro 20 milligrams for anxiety, Adderall XR 30 milligrams, and Adderall IR 20 milligrams for the ADHD. And honestly, it does more for avoiding depression. Over the summer, I went to see a psychologist for some differential diagnoses testing because I was curious and also because I thought I might have autism spectrum disorder triggered by some experiences I had in the spring. I then moved to Colorado to serve in the AmeriCorps. No idea how to explain what that is. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that he, he wrote that, not us. Uh, I know what AmeriCorps yeah, is. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. We used to have AmeriCorps uh, folks work for us. Uh... Teach for America is different than AmeriCorps, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So AmeriCorps is like 
volunteer service for the government or like it's a charity that you do good work? Uh, kind of. They get paid, but it's peanuts. It's like yeah, nothing. yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're it's a stipend basically. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but you're you're out there doing good community work. Yeah. Okay. Over Thanksgiving week, I had an appointment with the psychologist. I did the testing uh, with to go over the results. Long story short, he said I didn't have ADHD based on the results. I did the Connors CBT and the Millikens, I think, and some surveys for my parents and one other person. I found this assessment hard to believe for a few reasons. I think the Connors CBT results were skewed by my long history of playing video games where one might spend 20 minutes not moving, waiting to see an enemy, then reacting. I could further explain my argument if need be, but I'm afraid that even I wouldn't be able to comprehend it. The surveys my parents filled out had them barely marking anything, whereas my coworker and I marked more. But that makes sense to me as my coworker always knew me as having ADHD and my parents lived with me thinking everyone was normal for 21 years. The psych also said some stuff about ADHD that I didn't really think was super accurate, but he also seemed like he knew the subject. He also went on about TikTok diagnosis for a bit and explained why hyperfocus isn't a real ADHD thing. Something about a grad student doing a study and coming up with a conclusion that since kids uh, with ADHD were in the beta wave zone more than others, they were hyper-focused. I didn't agree with him that the study was flawed and shouldn't be gospel, or, and thought that the study was flawed and shouldn't be gospel, but he mentioned that someone had to be focused to play video games. And buddy, let me tell you, that is not true at all. Anyway, past the ADHD, uh, ADHD stuff, the other tests I took were computer surveys, much like a personality test. The results had me showing high for anxiety, big shocker, as well as borderline personality disorder, bipolar, and schizophrenia. Obviously, I don't have schizophrenia, as I don't have hallucinations or delusions or paranoia. He mentioned I might have scored in that one because of avoidant behaviors. He also said I didn't meet the criteria for bipolar, and I agree because I don't experience mania or have those cycles. As for borderline personality disorder, which I scored highest in, he said I didn't quite meet that one because I wasn't having adverse social problems or self-harming. But since moving away from home, which I'm happy about and generally love 85% of the stuff here, I have had to enter med mediation with one of my co-members, we aren't allowed to say that we work or get paid or stuff like that. The mediation sessions are good, but I'm noticing much of a change. Everything just goes back to normal after a few days. The issues I'm having with the person are now also happening with the other co-worker uh, with whom I do service and with whom the first co is a roommate. Sorry about the syntax. Shit gets rough. So, that, <laughs> so that's some adverse effects in my social relationships. Also, since arriving a few months ago, I used my pocket knife to scratch my wrist. This happened twice. I didn't manage to actually make a cut, but still. I did these not because I wanted the adrenaline or to feel something else. I wanted to do it because I felt like people would take me more seriously then, and because I thought that it would help me relate to kids that were harming themselves. I serve in childcare. Self-harm isn't a known issue with the kids I serve, so this was like a future thing. I still don't think I meet the criteria for BPD, borderline personality disorder, because I don't really push and pull in my relationships, at least not in action. In my head, I do this sometimes, but I don't think it's to the extremes that would fit borderline. All in all, I'm glad I took the tests, even though I'm more confused than before and not sure if I really trust the results. I'm also disappointed that the psych mentioned nothing about autism spectrum disorder because during the first session before the tests, he mentioned he thought I might have autism and I would tend to agree. I don't get a lot of social cues or understand subtext like at all and some other stuff too, but that's the easiest to explain. I know psychology tests aren't uh, ex really held to high acclaim with a lot of professionals and there are a lot of flaws in them because of self-reporting biases and such, but hey, they're fun. Thanks for reading all of that. Feel free to trim it down as you see fit. Uh, I'm trusting you guys, despite everything I know. <laughs> all the best, Colin. Okay. So, psychological testing. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> Man, so there's a lot in this letter. Um, we got a lot of layers to this. Yeah. A lot of pieces to take apart. So, mostly in... 
I don't know, in Nevada at least, it seems like a lot of psych testing is done by psychologists Usually, for the most part. Yeah. So I have not done any of that because I've not needed to in right. addictions treatment. I don't know if you've done much of it. No. Yeah. So I don't I don't I don't know. There's um so I guess Well, that's all the time we have today, <laughs> folks. <laughs> well, today's episode's to... brought to you by O O O'Reilly's <laughs> Auto Parts. Oh! It's 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 hard to really give you feedback on that other than like I think we just kind of have to trust those results, you know? Like I didn't you know, we didn't do those tests um, I, I I I couldn't sit here and disagree with the psychologist that that administered them. Oh, I could. Yeah, <laughs> Jacob will. I, yeah. I'm not gonna, but I could. So, <laughs> all right, let's let's kind of examine these one at a time. Um, let's start with a zoom out to talk about what we're we're even talking about here. So, we're gonna take the first piece. I want to talk about you um, cutting yourself with your knife. We're gonna talk about that, Colin. You're not getting out of this. We're gonna talk about the personality tests. Um, but let's zoom back for a second and let's talk about ADHD and let's talk about testing. So, um, if you are a patron of the show, patreon.com slash therapy, I am, I've put out a six hour deep dive into ADHD. Episode two uh, of that series has been released this week. As you're hearing this episode is released on Monday and that episode is about diagnosis. So it goes into the history of ADHD as a diagnosis, how the criteria has changed over time. Then it gets into how the diagnosis looks today and, and kind of how we make that judgment call. The third episode, uh, which will air two uh, weeks from now, uh, is about this. It's about how we do full-blown assessing for ADHD. Because ADHD symptoms are just these, these exaggerations of what would can be considered very typical human behavior, but they're exaggerations to the point of disruption. And so in the third episode, we go deeper into the full-blown gold standard, here's how you assess for ADHD. Now, this test that Connor's talking, or that Colin's talking about, the test is called the Connors, is considered a very reliable test. It is a personality test, and it has to do with measuring cognitive functioning kind of live. It has you doing these, these kinds of activities, asking questions, <clears throat> and it's measuring you as you go. That solely should not be used to diagnose ADHD. We do not use that in the criteria of ADHD. Right. If, if you were trying to render a right. diagnosis, it doesn't say, what does the Connors CPT say? No, it's used as supplemental data as, as to, to gather more information. When we're diagnosing ADHD, because there has been a glut of diagnoses, because we're in this phase where, and if you if you listen to episode two of the deep dive, we talk about how the diagnosis of ADHD has been changed over time, and how the one we currently have is quite broad. It's it's the lowest standard it's ever been for that diagnosis, and and to whom it is written, and why that is causing a, an influx. But in the third episode, we get deeper into if you really wanted a rigorous ass ADHD diagnosis. How would you get that? And not to give away too much, I want you to go check it out because I get to really dial in on this in the deep dive, but the Connor CBT is one piece of what you would use. You would also use the second thing we saw in Colin's story, interviews, third-party interviews, where you send let, or you send uh, scales to other people and you say, hey, best friend, what do you notice in Colin? Hey, mom and dad, what do you notice in Colin? Hey, Colin, why don't you fill out a survey too? That's all more data. And then you would also do an exhaustive biopsych social where you would sit down and do a huge clinical interview where you're carefully going through the full context of his life and stories, trying to really piece it all together. The problem in real life is that it is unreasonable to expect that we can do all those things exhaustively in order to get a diagnosis. Most people need to get on with their lives. They don't have time to schedule this much checking in and care and evaluation to, to render this diagnosis. And so as we get into in that, that third installment on the series, we talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of each of these components and what works and what doesn't work. If you combine them all, you do have what we consider to be the best possible way to render that diagnosis. But again, it gets us into these weeds of seeing diagnosis as fate, as destiny, as a type of being. And that's so, not accurate. Question for you, because this is a lot of work Yeah, to yeah. go through. To make an ADHD diagnosis, right? What percentage 
guess of clinicians are likely to just start treating it yes. to see how you respond uh-huh. and use that as the method for diagnosis. That's the standard. And, yeah. and so, and we talk about this a lot more in episode three where we kind of explore the pros and the cons of that, right? Like, okay, so is this the kind of thing that we should really laboriously be going through? And, and in episode three, we also tell the story of Heather who has a, a very different experience in the United Kingdom getting a diagnosis for ADHD and then getting treatment for ADHD. It, it's so exhaustive and so elaborative and still being denied treatment. And it's just ridiculous. And so we get into the weeds of discussion of like, what is the right method here? Should you just go for it and just start treating this person? Or do we really need to get this right? And and I'm an advocate of like, I don't care. Like we don't need to drill into this because the public is being falsely led to believe that ADHD is this like core who you are fundamental principle. And if you listen to the deep dive, we kind of unpack what it really is, this constellation of symptoms that we used to describe a pattern. And ADHD goes into remission. A lot of people don't even know that. It's actually expected to go into remission. That is what is typical. But the way it's portrayed in the world is like, no, 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 this is who you are. Like you're white or or this is your gender or like this is your eye color. And ADHD is who you are. There are relatable aspects of this that are, are true, and we do consider it to be a neurodevelopmental concept, which is also in debate right now. But we do put it in the same chapters as autism, and autism is a brain function, right? So we know that there is a, a, a synthesis between the symptoms and the way the brain function works in some of the hardware. But it is, it's a reductionist way to describe it, to say that this is just simply who you are. You just have this kind of brain. And, and so we get really into the weeds in the deep dive. I can't do mm-hmm. enough of it here. But to your first question, Colin, where you say, look, what's the deal with these tests? Look, the, the tests are legitimate in the sense that they are useful tools. I don't like them being the only thing that was used. And if this person did not conduct a thorough clinical interview, a thorough biopsych social, sat you down, did a whole intake, really got to know your story, I don't know that any of this data is reliable. Right. Well, it almost kind of sounds like these are used, not not exactly, but like where my mind goes is I think of these as almost kind of like screening tools. Yes. Yeah. So like in, in substance use disorder treatment, we'll use screening tools prior to an assessment. Right. And what the screening tool does is it, it helps us identify and target things that we're going to really focus on right. in the assessment. But it doesn't it diagnose. Doesn't, exactly. It doesn't make the diagnosis. No. It, it kind of is kind of like a, it helps us identify some red flags. Like, hey, explore yeah. this look further. Here. Yeah, go yeah, Look here. at this, mm-hmm. you know, so. And that's kind of what these are. Like, whenever you get testimonials from third parties, family, friends, bosses, okay, to the clinician, that's more data. It's demonstrating that there might be interference in this person's life from this mm-hmm. behavior. This The Connor CPT also gives you, like, demonstration of cognitive function in real time. And so, again, it, it supports the case. But I just don't even know that I see value in making this huge, exhaustive, voluminous case to diagnose ADHD. A right. pediatrician will diagnose it in less than 20 minutes. Right. Which is, you know, again, that that creates its own systemic and social problems. If we're overdiagnosing a problem, that's fine. But I, 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 I guess I just I do see the value in these if you're doing it to, to learn, if you're doing it to seek treatment. But the, the, the punchline of the story that I'd give you, Colin, is... Look, if you think you have ADHD and you relate to those symptoms, it doesn't matter what that psych says. It doesn't matter what that test says. It doesn't matter what your parents wrote down. It doesn't matter if you self-scale. What matters is go get help for those symptoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you should be doing. Because again, like I, and this has always been my philosophy with addictions treatment. Right. Is if we're treating it like any other disorder, our main, our two main objectives should be. Decreasing symptoms and improving functioning. That's it. So if we're talking about ADHD, forget about the diagnosis itself. If we if we can relate to the symptoms, our goal should still be whether or not you have the diagnosis. Right. Our goal should be let's see if we can decrease those symptoms. Right. And let's see if we can improve your functioning. Right. So at the end of the day, whether you have the diagnosis or not, right. we can still work on those things. And, and that's not to and, – and, you know, if you're a long-term listener of the show, you know that Nick and I, we wrestle with – the right way to use diagnosis. Because we understand that for many of our patients, 
it has been a liberating and validating thing. They hear that and they go, oh my God, there's a name for this. Mm -hmm. That means so much to me. I feel normalized. I feel seen. And that is huge. And it also usually leads to uh, associating with other people that are working on this, getting more resources, getting more help. In all those ways, it's really good. But long-term listeners of the show also know these words can become weaponized. They can become distractions. They can become these sticky labels that we put over ourselves and become an identity factor and that may be reductionist. That that may simplify things so much that now we're not appreciating the very real complexity of these concepts and of these symptoms and, and getting the help that we need when we need it and right-sizing what this is. Mm -hmm. and, and look, I say this over and over and over again in the ADHD series. I always start the series by saying, look, we're going to get into this. We're going to talk a lot of science and we're going to talk a lot of clinical but I'm not here to, like, validate or invalidate your diagnosis by talking about mental health, right? Like, you should still get assessed and do your own work. And at the end of the day, if you relate to these concepts, you hear somebody else describe what living with ADHD is like, you read about it, you see it out there, and you say, I relate to all of this, then do the things that help those people. That's what you should be doing. You uh -huh. should be solution-focused. But I still appreciate that for some people, they're like, gosh, but I need to know. I need to know if I have it or I don't have it. I need to know the truth. And look, as a clinician that diagnoses ADHD, look at how much trouble it is. Even with going to a psych who will do the, the test, I won't even do the Connors on you. I do the clinical exam, which is considered the gold standard, but the Connors is a huge adjunct. I will not send testimonials to family and friends and scaling uh, surveys. I won't do that. This psych did. And look, even with all that data, it feels very incomplete. It feels so personal. So it's tough because a lot of people want to know this 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 uh this truth as if it will finally reveal who they really are as if it's like the end of the story as if god if there is a god sits down with you and says this was the real deal all along now you finally know and then the book closes or something and like we have to be careful with that and and what my whole series is about is about engaging with the very nuanced complexity of this not so that we can be proven right or wrong but so that we can seek better help and better understanding. Yep. And that's what I would encourage you in this case, Colin, to do. Look, yep. if you think that you have ADHD, regardless of what these tests showed you, I'm not going to, on this podcast, say, nope, those tests are bogus. No, they're legitimate tests. And I, I can't speculate whether the shrink used them right or wrong or whether the shrink should have done five other things. At the end of the day, I worry this is distracting you from getting help. You know, because we're fretting over this. We're worried about it. We're feeling invalidated by it. If you resonate with these characteristics, these qualities, call it ADHD and start getting help for it. That's yeah. what would be the most helpful thing for you. Now, what about the scratching? Okay, Colin. Because <laughs> that stuck out to me, too. I yeah. highlighted that. I really want to come back to that yeah. because we don't need to be doing that. I don't love it. I don't love it, Colin. And I, if I'm picking up what you're throwing down, I think you're saying, hey, I did this. It was impulsive. It was experimental. It wasn't a coping. It wasn't a cry for help. It wasn't me being self-harming. It was me wanting to relate to those who have done this, kids in particular, because I'm helping kids right now. And in the future, I may meet a kid who's done this, and I want to understand them. Colin, I don't like this. Well, it's, it's, it's unnecessary, it's it's risky number one. Yeah. It's unnecessary because even by doing it, you still don't have an understanding. You still for the don't kid. understand. So it. you didn't accomplish what right. you were hoping to accomplish. Right. So there's really no point in doing it at all. Exactly. Just because you've done the same physical action doesn't mean you'll ever understand what it was like for that person who did that under a very different context mm -hmm. with very different motivations. So, Colin, I don't love it. Um, it's the kind of thing that I would encourage you to kind of keep to yourself. Um, I wouldn't go out there and, and tell kids like, oh, I've done this too, you know, so I can relate to you. I get it. I felt what that feels like. Um, a, I, and I, Colin, I say this to you as a friend because you've been a long-term supporter of the show. I know your heart's in the right place. I know you're writing in in good faith and genuinely and saying, guys, I really want to just get some coaching on this. And so I want to come alongside you in good faith with friendship and say, yep, this is this is something that in your work, you're doing great work in the community. Um I wouldn't want you talking about that because I don't want it triggering other people. I don't want it, I, I don't want to say normalizing. I don't want it to um, minimize what this is mm -hmm. or, or make it too approachable 
or role model it Mm -hmm. for young people that are very vulnerable. I appreciate your heart that you want to show compassion and understanding for people. And Colin, the best way that you can do that is read their stories. The best way you can do that is is research, learn, watch videos, listen to those voices. And, And I think if you can hear them, that's the best way to develop empathy and deeper understanding to what people in that scenario are doing and going through. And especially focusing on the stories of survivors or people that have learned alternatives to self-harm and have overcome it, that's key because then not only can you understand where they came from, but also what resonated with them to taking a good step. That way, when you do meet young people that are doing this, which you probably will, you don't just have the bad side of it. You also can point them toward positive alternatives and coping. Yeah. That would probably be a big part of it. Yep. I think that's a better approach. Yeah. Yeah. Cut that out. Ah, there it is. He's, man, how long were you holding that? Uh, until you would shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just, just waiting patiently. The, the middle thing about the personality tests, um, that one was curious, and, and I, I guess I, I just have more questions than answers because it sounds like you were given tests. I don't think they were personality tests. I think they were tests having to do with personality disorders Yeah. because those are not traits. Like You cannot be a personality of borderline personality disorder you can't be a personality that no we would use like the big five we would use like ocean we would talk about openness and and neuroticism and and things like that those that's how we measure personality traits i don't think it would be these so i get the impression that whatever you took was kind of assessing maybe or like screening I, it's not like screening tools yeah which yeah, i would were... treat the same way as you would yeah. treat those substance abuse ones yeah exactly yeah. which is just tell me anything exactly it just it just maybe. tells us like here's areas for further exploration Ask more questions that's it and and for all of you that are students out there or interns and you know you're thinking oh yeah what's the deal with testing testing comes from the right place i think there's a desire to get to a place where we can have some better, more objective things to point to in this weird, wishy-washy world of human psychology. For me, as a professional, I always take the approach of, look, if you want to do those tests, you can go specialize in them. You need to highly train to do them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that pisses me off is every once in a while, there's a clinician who will just go find the research paper where that test was developed, get the battery of questions and the assessment tool, and just deliver it. And it's like, look, I realize you're very intelligent. I realize you're a scholar. I realize you had to do rigorous work to become a therapist or whatever. You're not trained on that instrument. You're just not. You know, there is a proper way to be trained on that. And I don't want you just winging it. And you have better skills anyway, in my opinion. If, if I had to pick between the validity of a, of a test online or scales or testimony of third parties versus the long-form assessment of a qualified therapist, I'm taking the long-form every time. Because it's designed to enter nuance. It's designed to get past those first barriers and misunderstandings and wrong markings. It's designed to really get to the core. And look, even that is not going to be 100% accurate. Again, you know my philosophy. It's not about accuracy. It's about results. I care more about progress than, than figuring out, like, the cause. And this is something else we talk about in episode two of the ADHD Deep Dive, is what is mental health diagnosis? How is that different than medical diagnosis. And if you're Mm -hmm. listening on the Patreon, you're getting a a good lesson in the fundamental qualities of what a mental health diagnosis must have. All diagnoses, not just ADHD. The fundamental qualities that they must have and why that is different than medical diagnoses and have a different purpose. So anyway, the point is, go to patreon.com slash therapy. Throw a buck in the hat. Well, actually, you have to throw five in the hat to get that one, but... Go in there to listen to the ADHD deep dive. And Colin, Money you definitely grab. should. Hey, uh, unabashedly, uh, I'll sing for my supper. Uh, six hours of content. Go grab it. You should. <laughs> I think it's really useful. And dialogue with other people. Um, because, again, it's not about validating or invalidating any of these things. It's about noticing qualities we have, the constellation of symptoms. If giving a name to that constellation is helpful to you, wonderful. That's a tool. Use that tool. If it's unhelpful for you, don't use that tool. I don't care about diagnoses. I care about solutions to your symptoms, management of the problem. For some people, ADHD, they'll they'll enter remission or they'll learn to manage it or medication will allow them to function and the problem is solved. For some people, it's a lifelong battle. They don't always have it well managed and they're trying to figure it out and they're constantly navigating. There are going to be people that relate to each other and have special, um, you know, specific stories. You talked about the hyper focus thing. And how the psych said, hey, hyper-focus isn't exactly a trait that we diagnose on. But then if you go out into the ADHD world, you'll hear a lot of people 
that resonate with the diagnosis of ADHD sharing these supplemental facts where they say, hey, have you ever done this? And a lot of hands go up and go, yeah, I have done that. And they go, wow, maybe this is a trait we all have in common. And for all we know, it is. But diagnoses are not based on those common benign traits. They're, they're, they're based on malevolent traits, malignant traits, disease traits. That's why it's a healthcare diagnosis. We're not tracking all the good things. You know, we're, we're tracking the bad thing. We don't diagnose freckles. We diagnose melanoma. Right. And so that's the way you should probably approach it. But, hey, this is a great question and, and it steers in a lot of directions. Um, but just as a reminder, when it comes to the scratching thing, um, yeah, you know, I, I know your heart's in the right place, Colin, but look up the stories, dive deeper and, and, and reach empathy through understanding, not through replication. Um, I don't think that gets us closer to people. I think that's us. Mm, just in the wrong direction. Let, let's put it that way. I, just yep. the same way it's like, oh, I want to resonate with somebody with heroin addiction. So let me go try that. No, that's not how you're going to get there. You yep. know, you're, that's dangerous and, and replicating something you don't need. It's just the wrong idea. Mm -hmm. Go in a new direction. That's be what I would suggest. Yep. Anyway, friend, thank you for writing in. Thanks for your long-term support of the show. We love you. And uh, Colin, jump back in and, and try to get access to some of this ADHD material. I think you'll really find it interesting. There you go. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, the holidays are you here. You son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to want to get cards for all of your loved ones. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Go to <laughs> Jim's House of Cards. <laughs> Dot net. <laughs> dot gov. That's all we can afford. Dot Jim, biz. House of Cards. <laughs> dot net. Uh, I can't wait to find out what all. that website eventually points to. It'll Perfect. Be fun. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about working on mental health while being in a relationship. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Robert Brownie Jr. Mintz, Kayla Lansbury, Cindy Ash, Kevin Chamberlain, Ben Stanley, Adam Hathaway, Myra, Liv, and Heyo. Heyo! Would you like to sponsor the show? Become a therapy producer at patreon.com slash therapy. And our trivia theme this week in honor of our therapy producers is movie cars. What? All right. Okay. True. Uh, all right. Final answer. <laughs> there are cars in movies. <laughs> Done. This is not multiple choice. You just got to know these. Okay. 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 The Etzel. It take it took very little modification to turn this nineteen to turn the nineteen fifty five Ford Lincoln Futura concept car into this crime fighting vehicle for a nineteen sixty six movie. Ding. Binling shit. Jacob. Batman. Fuck. What's the name of the vehicle? <gasps> oh, fuck oh. you, Batmobile, Batmobile. Batmobile. Give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> it is the Batmobile. It's, yeah! It's, specifically, it's the Adam West Batmobile. Also, specifically, it is. I don't know that I, in, in your question, I don't know that, I, I will defend Jacob's honor, because I don't know that it I was picked a little up. confusing. I didn't yeah. pick up that you wanted the name of the car. I, too, thought it was the show. Concept car into this crime-fighting vehicle for a 1966 movie. I was fine with that. I got the point. Yeah. I agree. I should get the point. Uh, you both get the point because oh. I got a, I got a very good um, uh, tiebreaker. Oh, so shit. we kind of have right. to. Why we, not? We need that. Yeah. Why not? So okay, there right you now go. tiebreaker or tiebreaker no. later at the if end round. Two. Okay. Copy. Oh, we got it. We can't give it to them all at once. That's right. We got to tease it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. They got to earn it. Yeah. Working on mental health. By the way, have you seen the 1955 Ford Lincoln Futura? The, the Batmobile. Car? The original no, Batmobile? the car. Yeah, with, no. the, with the bubble top and everything. The only one I know okay. is the Batmobile. Yeah, so I thought that they took that car, kind of stripped it down, kind of used oh, the chassis. No. No. no they it, literally just slapped the bat signal When you on look it. at no. the... When yeah. You, if, you, if you do a Google <laughs> image search of that car, what, what what's the whole thing? It's the 1955 Ford Lincoln Futura concept car. Yeah, if you do a Google image search for that... You're going to look at a car that looks exactly like Adam West Batmobile. Really? Yeah. Just yeah. different colors, and it doesn't have the the Batman logo on yeah, the side. Yeah, they of it. they literally just put like the red trim paint yeah. okay. around it and put the bat sign Do on it. Do you and that's think it. that helped or hurt the sales of that car? Well, they just, I, it never show. it never they actually they never sold it. They never produced it. It was what? a concept. It was a concept car. car. Yeah. No. Yeah. So they made it. Somehow the TV show said, hey, can we use that as the official Batmobile? The guy who did the car for them is a, is a famous car guy for TV and film. Like, he made the, uh, the hearse car for the Munsters. Okay. He made the, uh, the car for, I think he made the car for the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, oh. With all the stuff oh, hanging yeah, off of it. Yeah, okay. Like, he, he was a guy who made a, a fuck ton of those cars. Huh. 
Is his and name Holly so Mustang? That's it. It is. You lying sons of bitches? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I haven't forgotten. I don't believe a word you're saying right now. I don't want to go, oh, yeah, there's a famous car designer, Jim. He made the Munster car. I'm sure he fucking did. Yeah, I'm sure no, but he, he did. Had, he had, like, access, and he had he had ends in the in the car industry already. So that's how he got a hold of a concept car to, to make it out of. Mm-hmm. That is fascinating, man. That yeah. Well, it is a cool-looking cool. car. Yeah. Like, oh, man, yeah. if Ford would come back out with that bad boy. Oh, yeah. oh, that'd be... I got to ride in a Tesla today. That was uh, really cool. Have you guys ever been in a Tesla? Yeah, no. That was neat. They don't have uh, handles for the doors. Yeah. Well, they Sometimes. do, but I didn't figure out. They pop that out. out. They pop yeah, out. They're, yeah, they're hard to figure out. The driver had to come around and let me in because I could not figure out the handle. Not surprising at all? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Handles of cars. More complicated than you think they are. Yep. Next question. Working on mental health while in a relationship from Anonymous. Hi, smiley face. I have spent way too long trying to word this question or even understand what I'm asking, so I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope this translates. Basically, one of the big issues in my last relationship was me not understanding or really ever having thought about my own needs in a relationship, and my partner did not understand this to advocate for me, and I learned these things too late to salvage our relationship. Now, I'm worried about something similar happening in my current relationship. My current partner is not a very introspective person and has not done really any work on his mental health. I'm the opposite. I'm deeply introspective, have worked a lot on my mental health, have been in therapy, attended wellness retreats, and have consumed a lot on the subject. Books, podcasts, etc. I mention this because he said things to me that I know from experience take a lot to work through and make me worry that it clouds our ability to work through things in our relationship. So in a way, I don't always trust when he says everything is fine because I don't know if he knows if everything is fine. Like in my above example of my past relationship, if you had asked me, I would have said everything was fine, but it was later when it was too late that I realized it wasn't. Now, I understand there is no barometer or measure in mental health and that I'm not an expert or perfect model of mental health. I'm just saying that I do know that there is a lot of work to do in this realm, and if someone isn't doing and hasn't done much of any work within it, it worries me. If he hasn't done much to develop the language and tools to help himself, how can we create and maintain a healthy relationship? I'm not a therapist. I wouldn't be a good therapist. I don't have the training of a therapist, and I don't want to be a therapist. But I also want to find healthy ways to support my partner and our relationship. He is often depressed and unmotivated. I can tell he isn't happy. He says he doesn't understand his feelings or what to do about them. I give him tips from what I've learned. But did I mention I don't want to be his therapist? I don't go much beyond that. I've suggested therapy, but he doesn't have the income or desire, and he doesn't have other skills to work through it well without a therapist. So, how can I facilitate healthy conversations that strengthen our relationship and support him without trying to be a therapist? I don't want to be his therapist. How can I advocate for my partner without making assumptions or presumptions? Should we be doing weekly check-ins? How do you guys navigate relationships with your wealth of knowledge and ability and meet people where they are at when it affects you? Sorry so long. Sorry if that isn't clear. Love you guys anyway. And the podcast Anonymous pronouns are she and her. All right. I love this question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because part of this. All right. So the first thing we need, when we're talking about him, the boyfriend, husband, what is he? The, the other person, the significant yeah, other. The partner. The partner. Um, so I guess the first thing we would look at is, first off, so he's not working on himself or his, his mental health or his mental well-being, I guess we can say that. But we should first ask, is it manifesting, is it creating problems, right? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody on earth has to be working on something, necessarily. Right, we need to look at is it becoming is it causing a clinically significant amount of distress? So the writer did talk a little bit about there being some depression, about there being uh, a little bit of uh, 
lack of motivation or sometimes he's not happy. Okay, so we right. can we can say there's a little something there. Sure. Okay. So let's just take the writer's word for it. There's something there. She sees this as being an issue. Let's also assume that he does as well. Right. Okay. Which is an assumption, but we're gonna let's for the purposes of this, let's go ahead and, and make that assumption. Right. Done. Um assumed. Then the thing is, is uh so you don't want to be a therapist. Great. You shouldn't be. Don't be. <laughs> Absolutely don't want to be. Now, the other thing that I want to point out here, too, and I think maybe this is just a guy thing. So I'm, I'm interested how you guys, if you have the same thing. I probably disagree because you're a sexist, but go on. I I, I am. Yeah. Yes. I have a job interview thing, yeah. so <laughs> I really have to keep it clean right now. Sorry. I can't come with you. I'm just going to ostracize I'm not a, you. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that's... Yeah. yeah, you're working in academia now, that's so it. that's yeah, the yeah, right yeah. thing I have to do. take the high path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. sorry, guys. Can't <laughs> slum it with you anymore in, yeah. in your chauvinism. There you go. Go on. Uh, no, but I, I, I'm not going to generalize, but I do think this does tend to happen more with men, and probably because at a very young age, we're taught not to identify emotion. Mm, yeah. Right, we're, we're you're you're not directly told this, but indirectly you kind of learn that it's not okay. It's right? not attended it's to. Not, yeah, nobody's curious about exactly. it, and we they're don't. mostly annoyed with you. Yeah, for you just it. need to kind of man up and deal yeah, with this. You'll never right? get sympathy. Just exactly. Dismissed. Yeah. So so you're kind of taught at a very young age that emotions just something we don't talk about, and because we don't talk about it, then we don't identify it. Right. right. Now, so I think that's part of the issue. The other part of the issue sometimes is that sometimes I think if, like, Laura will ask me every once in a while, like, are you okay? Mm-hmm. You know, like, she thinks something's wrong. Sure, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I text you that, too. Yeah, I te- but are you she's... mad at me? And you just never reply, making yeah. me the answer is confirm yes. that you are yeah. probably mad at me, and now I'm wondering <laughs> why. But go on. But sometimes I really am just fine. Right. And that's okay. And I think, I think sometimes... Um, sometimes people project that somebody is thinking and is in a much deeper right. plane of thought right. than what they let on. Right. Um, whereas I'm really very simple. Like mm-hmm. I can just be sitting and staring off into space. Right. Not thinking anything. Have you seen that meme <laughs> with the, the man and the woman in bed? Yeah. And yeah. She's looking <laughs> she's at him. Like, she's like, oh my God, he's probably thinking of other women. Yeah. And, and then he's like, like, you know, how did Optimus Prime survive? Like, <laughs> like yeah, he's just like yeah. sitting there like, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. That meme, I think, How did really, SpongeBob burn wood underwater in really, Bikini Bottom? <laughs> it really explains a lot. And I right. think it, it really encapsulates this idea, this concept that like, when, when she asked me, are, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Right. Or what are you thinking? Like nothing. Right. I'm not being dishonest. No. I'm 100% sincere. Right. I'm really I'm just not thinking content. about anything. Yeah. Right. I'm just existing. <laughs> like, that's it. Nothing's happening. So so there's that. So I, I think this kind of muddies the water, right? Because it, it's quite possible that he's just perfectly fine and content. Right. And maybe there's nothing below that. Mm-hmm. There, there may not be anything below the surface there. Right. So... I I don't want to encourage you to like, oh, no, don't take no for an answer. Let's dig deep and let's keep asking questions about how how this is, you know, let's get in there. Because sometimes that itself then starts causing conflict that didn't need to happen. Um, But if he is identifying that, yeah, he's kind of depressed or he's he's unhappy, he's feeling unmotivated, stuff like that. I think that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last week, the wheel of feel. Oh, yeah. The feeling wheel. Um, I think that is a great tool. Yeah. And that's something that he can use and you don't have to be his therapist. You don't have to coach him, but just him having that and being able to look at this and him just being able to identify like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling a little depressed, but what's beneath that? Right. All right. So we find depressed and then we're seeing something else, you know, like worried or concerned. Let's go even one step below that. And then you can kind of start really honing in on some really specific feelings and it just helps the person explore internally kind of what's happening. I love that. I, I agree with everything there. The other thing I would add is, so the writer says that they enjoy self-help, and, and they go on wellness retreats, they've done therapy, they like you know podcasts and books and self-development. And, and I think that, the, the, that all that's wonderful. I'm all for self-development. But if we can be honest, 
sometimes whenever that's one of your favorite forms of media and entertainment and development and info, it creates this false reality that everybody should be working on themselves all the time, that Mm. there's always some inner reveal, some epiphany, some insight. And sometimes that can be really frustrating. I've, I've had patients that are really into it, and it's like every other time I talk to them, they have a new revelation. Yeah. And they're like, Jim, I just finished reading this book by David Goggins. It is a game changer. <laughs> I'm a different person. I'm like, that's great. What did you get? I finally learned that the thing holding me back was this. And all I had to do was this acronym. Closed-toed shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to switch it up, baby. Let the babies breathe. Look at my flip-flops. Yeah. This little piggy went to the fucking gym. You know, so like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, and it's just always a new pivot. And that's fine because I look at that person, I'm like, this is you. This is you. You like this. You are constantly remodeling the kitchen. And and, mm-hmm. and, and it's because you, you love putting fresh paint on the canvas. And there's layers to this. And you'll, you'll build it one way. And then all of a sudden you'll read something new, see something new. And that epiphany is so resonant. And, like, you'll incorporate in your life. And it just feels huge. But, but the illusion that that can also create is that you were incomplete, broken, and ignorant before you received that final piece Mm -hmm. of information that everything you were doing before was wrong and broken and now you're finally better than that and so it creates this false paradigm where we think well i've done so much learning and and reflecting and insight building and wellness retreats and book reading and 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 learned this system and this acronym and this formula and and all these incredible insights and so much of it plays a role in the way i I intentionally do relationship and and my life if somebody doesn't have that they seem woefully inadequate, woefully underprepared, because each one of these things was so seismic for me. How can you just be living at base? And sure, we seem fine, but I'm, I'm scared of what little tools you have and what little work you've done on this, even though we're getting along and things are fine. And the writer says, but my fear is, what if one day it's not? That's what happened in my first relationship. It was fine until it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Then I'm reading and trying to understand what the hell happened. And with 2020 hindsight, I go, oh, that was our problem. We had this fundamental flaw. If only I had read these books earlier. Right. But this is why we talk about that that old aphorism, hindsight's twenty twenty. We're we're kind of mocking how all humans do this. Yeah. In in the rear view mirror, it all makes sense. And you have this false idea that if only I had read this book or th- saw this insight, I could have prevented bad thing from happening. There's times when that's true. But I think this industry, the self help industry, self development media concept it does accidentally create that paradigm that mm-hmm. people think this is a body of knowledge and if you lack this, you are unprepared for things and I need more in order to be equipped. The other thing it can create is a hypervigilance. Yes. I need to be hungry for more information because somewhere out there is the page of the book that I needed that could have been the answer to problem I haven't faced yet. And so we start becoming hoarders of information. Our bookshelves are filled. Our Kindles are filled. Our podcast queue is filled. Always listen to Pod Therapy, by the way. Um, you could delete all the other ones, but keep this one. So this becomes this endless search for more information because we become knowledge hoarders in anticipation and hypervigilance of threats that may one day exist. Now, friend, those are not necessarily terrible things. Certainly you're a better human for engaging and learning. But I'm, I worry for the hypervigilance that can cause. And it can cause us to worry that our relationships won't be inadequate or this person won't be ready or whatever. Blaise Pascal, uh, the French mathematician and philosopher, once said two errors, to take everything literally, to take everything spiritually. And, and I, would, I would come to that phrase and, and replace spiritually with psychologically. I think there are two errors. To be so superficial that one doesn't become aware of inward motivations and sort of unseen realities— too literal, too surface, that's probably an error. And the other error is just as dangerous, and that's to be too psychological, to believe that everything is psychology, to look for depth and meaning and symbolism and what if itness about every damn thing. When sometimes Nick's just watching TV. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm not debating our relationship. I'm no. really just wondering why we don't eat owls. Right, right, right. <laughs> We eat chicken, we eat turkey, right. we eat uh-huh. quail. Yeah. How did we determine that these birds are okay They're, to eat and these well, birds are not? They deliver mail for the wizards, Nick. They have a purpose. No, Animals with a purpose and a function. Okay, that explains. That's, that's all really I needed. I just point, needed though. an answer. Owls, besides the wizarding world of Harry Potter. I think uh, they're kind of 
slim. I don't think there's a whole lot of body to an owl. Is that it? It's all fur. They got a lot of all feathers, yeah. We protect yeah. Okay. owls right. because just, they contribute. I, an yeah, I, think I think their physical body isn't Here's very the deal. big. Huh. You get off the menu well, if, but if you we, have a job. If we, if we, if we farmed them, we, uh-huh. do. we could Go fatten on. them up. Go you know on. that we do, right? Yeah, we you know could. that owl farms are a thing. Yeah, I know. But it's not to eat them. It's to harvest owl pellets to send to middle school science classes. So they can dissect them. So you can, did you guys open up owl pellets yeah, we did your kids? Yeah, yeah. Did you do it? Yes. Yeah. Find a little mouse skeleton yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was wild, man. It was pretty cool. I was yeah. pretty disturbed it was, by it. It was the only thing I didn't mind dissecting. You had to dissect other things? Oh, not middle school. Did, when did you do owl pellets? I did owl pellets in like was, fourth grade. Oh, I don't know. It may have been fifth. Yeah, no, that's a good elementary fifth or one. Six, maybe. I don't easy know. Easy to do. Yeah. Easy clean up. I I don't remember when it was, but I remember being just very very happy dissecting the owl pellet. Okay. Because like everything I found in there was just great. Like it was it was really good. Like I found a you know a little little skeleton that was good. I yeah. found like little other little little like bones and everything, and that yeah. was good. I, yeah. What I'm really trying to say it was it was owl good. Oh. Oh, oh man. Just nailing it. He's he's not the best in the game for no reason. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Just take yeah. your own little journey yeah. there, everybody. Just, you know, but it landed where you wanted That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That was the right answer. Uh, you know, I believe by telling that joke, I just got a teaching job. I think you did. At, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you did. Nevada <laughs> You just got promoted into something. higher education. Yeah. Uh, because you're just are impressing people with that much knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know where we we're going with this, but my point is, don't eat owls? Was that? I don't know. I, I think remember. that's what we we're getting at. I think yeah. that's, I don't remember. What was the question? It, something about self-help. Anyway, don't overdo it. You know, the other thing, too, I was thinking is it's kind of that, that same philosophy like, when uh, the only tool you have is a hammer. Everything's a nail. Uh, yeah. That's you know? it. And when you're a self-helpy person, then yeah. everything looks like an existential it's like threat. You get into something like, you know, how physical exercise is good for mental health, and all of a sudden it answers everything. Right. Like those assholes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't become one of them. Don't become. No, no but not. you're right. Because, <laughs> yeah, that, that becomes a whole thing. Yeah. And you'll talk to them and be like, oh, bro, you have diabetes? Let me tell you, man, all you have to do is, like, work your glutes. And, like, you know, come on, man. Like, there's not a holistic solution for every damn problem. Yeah. But that, that becomes the mentality. And self-help and mental health stuff can absolutely become guilty of that. And I think if there's one thing that I think we often do on the show, even though we are part of that media genre, in many ways we're constantly normalizing things and telling people, don't worry about this, don't read into this, mm-hmm. let that go, that can be surface, that's not a problem, let sleeping dogs lie, and focus over here, just be happy. You mm-hmm. know, and, and that would be my advice to you, because I can tell Anonymous that you're really worried about the relationship, mm-hmm. and you worry that, hey, my, my partner seems a little down, and and so those are flags for sure. If you say, hey, depression and, you know, not interested in therapy or can't access it. In that regard, I mean, I would encourage you to share thoughts and feelings. And, and I, I agree with what Nick said about, you know, teaching, hey, let's practice emotional vocabulary. Like, I really care about you. I want to know what you feel. And you know what? But also give somebody the dignity of silence because they may say, mm-hmm. I don't want to access that. My medicine is distraction. My medicine is to not think about my pain or my longings or whatever's inadequate in my life. My medicine is just to play this video game. And that's what I want to do. And that's actually going to really help me. Leave room for that. Because insight isn't always healthy. And and that would be my last point to you, Ryder. As a therapist, there are times when I have patients that I think, oh, this is a whole area that we could explore. But then I will decide clinically, and we shall not. Oh, we did that all the time in rehab. Right. Oh, all the time. Yeah, because like, okay, this person's going to be in our care for 30 to 45 days. Which is longer than you're going to have almost anywhere else. Right, and then you've got a whole history of trauma. Like, we're not going to crack that egg open right now. Not opening that door. Yeah. And there's times when we look at it and go, it's just not beneficial to the patient. Yeah. They could live the rest of their life without a complete understanding of this particular thing, and they won't be any worse off for it. And so we make that clinical judgment all the time. And I share that with you because I think, again, the mental health industry or the self-help industry, the self-development media, it has it makes that Blaise Pascalian error to take everything literally, take everything, in this case, psychologically. And it tends to want to psychologicalize every single damn thing and insist that all insight is good insight, all insight is meaningful insight. We must always do this deeper excavation work 
until we finally reach something. And, and I don't know that that's the case. Mm-hmm. So I, I would encourage you, again, be weary of hypervigilance. Yes, support and attend to your partner who appears to you know be suffering, making sure you are bringing good knowledge to that. If you do have wisdom or if you do have readings or things you can bring, that's not being their therapist. That's just allowing them to have access to information. We're all knowledge sharers. So share if they're not interested. Okay. Be available for when they want to talk, you know, be mindful, know the part of the self-help dictionaries that talk about how you as a partner can be helpful. Yeah. Do those behaviors, but you know, you're not there to heal them. It goes back to the three C's. You didn't cause it. You can't control it. You can't cure it. You know, we have to accept people where they're at. Mm -hmm. Owl good. (laughs) It's owl good. It's owl good. All right. We are going to take a quick... Everyone, come on down to Dr. Jimmy's Holistic Medicine. Why is it always me? Why can't Nick have a commercial? (laughs) Dr. Jimmy's Holistic Medicine. Uh. If you've got it, we can walk it off for you. (laughs) Dr. Jimmy's Holistic Medicine. Eat these nuts and berries. You'll be fine. Spit out the twigs. I thought you were going to go with Dr. Jim's Owl Pellet Emporium. I really did. But I guess we already did the owl thing. No, we've got it done now. He had his pun on that, so he didn't care. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about... Mo money, mo problems. You're so, listening to Pot There. Today's episode is brought to you by Robert Brownie Jr. Mintz, Kayla Lansbury, Cindy Ash, Kevin Chamberlain, Ben Stanley, Adam Hathaway, Myra, Lib, Hey Yo. Would you like Hello. to sponsor the show? Sorry. Become a Thera producer. Patreon.com slash therapy. Our next movie car trivia. 1978 Toyota Corolla. Nailed it. Two years off. Oh. Ah. The, a 1976 AMC Pacer Got it. was Dang. used as the Mirthmobile for this movie. Mirthmobile? What the hell is that? Wayne's World. The Mir- What? Correct. Oh, wait a minute. Is this the, the one that they sing Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. in? Yeah. Wow. Dude, you are crushing. <laughs> I knew of one movie that had a Toyota or a Pacer in it. AMC Pacer. Yeah, you AMC didn't tell Pacer. me about Wayne's World. I couldn't picture that car. I yeah. have no idea what that. As soon as you said is. Pacer, I was like, it has to be Wayne's World. Wow. So I had to. Rework. If you had just said Mirthmobile, I wouldn't have gotten it. See, okay, so but I, Pacer, I, I I knew it from Pacer. This is the second draft of these trivia questions. Yeah. Because the first draft, I gave you all the information, and you had to identify the car. Ah. And it was multiple choice. Uh huh. And then I was reading through. I was like, That's hard. They're no, they're not going to get it. 1982. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, so I had like that. four different cars that were well, like on that to one. If Pacer. you would, yeah, if you would had like Gremlin and Pinto and yeah. Pacer and like uh, I don't know a Mini. I, w- I could have gotten that. Yeah. If you had said uh, 1974, 1976, 1978, <laughs> or 1979, yeah. Pacer, yeah. No. which of those years? Like, I, I couldn't have gotten that. Yeah. I wouldn't have gotten the other one. You know, if you just would I don't. I honestly, with all my heart, don't know what a Pacer is, except that now you're referencing that movie, and I'm like, oh, it was like a small car. Yeah. There was yeah. like five guys little in there. Little two-door. Yeah, little two Pacer, door. Pinto. Uh, the, Very the, similar the to The Geo Metro. Pinto. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah all of those. Coops. Yeah, little little hatchback coupe. Yeah. yeah. God, that was. If you're gonna horf, horf into this. It wasn't horf. Yeah, he did. Well, it was. What did he spew. say? Spew. Ah, shit. Spew, spew into. You're this. right. Ah, yeah. oh, man, I you hate you, moron. I am. I hate yeah. getting corrected on movie quote. Just, Just go home. I, you know, go what? home. We're done here. I think that we've we've revealed that I am inadequate. Mo and money, mo problems, <laughs> and should not be employed by any entity, <laughs> anywhere at any time. Thank you, Jacob. Your your you got it, buddy. Is endless. This one's by Emily. Hello, Nick, Jim, and most importantly, Jacob. Hello. Help! It's Al Good. It's Al Good. Help! I cannot advocate for myself at all when it comes to money matters. Oh, Jacob's going to help you. I'll tell you that right now. If I go on a trip with friends and we all say we will split the cost of a hotel room and it goes on my card, Mm -hmm. I will never ask for the payment. This has been a lifelong problem. When I was younger, over the span of eight years, I let a friend rack up over $25,000 of money he borrowed from me. Sheesh. He always said, let's split, I'll get you back. I let it happen, naively thinking he would pay me back because I would never do that to a friend, but he didn't. I don't... (sighs) I'm going to keep reading. Tell me, tell me without telling me <laughs> yeah. that you're from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, I, when, it hit, when his debt hit $7,000, I, 
I asked him about it and showed him my records of writing it all down, and he seemed shocked, said he would pay, but never did. And I went on being used and being too afraid to bring it and up th- again. And didn't cut it off. I was young and wow. dumb, but surely when I got older, I would be less dumb. Wrong. I've gotten even worse. Enter a partner who made less than me and had long bouts of unemployment, and he got over $20,000 from me, probably more. I stopped counting because of the stress. He also never paid rent or any of the household bills. He even bought items like toothpaste, paper towels, or groceries on my dime. You would think I'm well off to be able to do this, but you'd be wrong. I am in extreme debt over all this. Wow. I used credit cards, again, naively thinking that they would be paid off when the person paid me back. Right. My poor decisions have ruined my life and dreams in a lot of ways. I don't think these people are bad people or quintessential users. And in the end, I definitely blame myself. I allowed it to happen. Number one, it is hard for me to see my friends struggle, and I want help. Number two, I believe, to a fault, obviously, that a friend wouldn't do this to me. Number three, I don't advocate for myself well. And number four, I am avoidant of confrontation. I tried to start a graphic design business, but whenever a friend utilized my services, I couldn't charge them. And if it wasn't a friend, I was filled with guilt by accepting money from someone. And so I shut down the business. I do value myself, but in this area, I'm weak. So, a penny for your thoughts. Just kidding. I don't have a penny. (laughs) Emily. Do you struggle Uh, with this? Do I struggle with this? Yes. No. 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 That's he is the last person in this room he can who do would it. struggle with it. He can do, but we talked about this before. <laughs> like you're you're the agent for your spouse. You do it, not yep. mind talking money. You no, no. walk in and go, hey, we gotta do this. Right. This is real life. You don't feel icky or weird about no. it. No. Man, I'm with Emily. It's not I weird. Just, I can't do it. It's oh, not it's, it's so it's itchy. not a weird thing. Like it's something that we all use many times a day, most days. Right. It's not a weird thing. Have you ever done this where a friend and you go out, you cover a bill, or Mm -hmm. you say, put the hotel on me, or put dinner on me, or whatever. I'll put the rental car on me. Uh And then do you... Because you're also a a generous guy, Mm -hmm. a feel-good kind of guy. We're Vegas people. A lot of times it's like, nah, don't worry about it. You know, like, dinner's on me, whatever. You know, gratuity. So, like, I can see those two values clashing. Because you're not a cheapskate. You're not the guy that's, like, keeping a tab. No, I'm very happy to pay for things. Right. And this is one thing I was going to say to Emily, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I I think you have to decide, like, if you're going to buy dinner, for instance, Mm -hmm. you have to decide before that bill hits, before you take care of that bill, you have to have the conversation like, hey, how do you want to do this? And it doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be accusatory. And if they say, can you get it and I'll pay you back? Yes. Now now we have an agreement okay. that we're entering into beforehand. Because it sounds like some in some cases, there's not really a set yeah. agreement beforehand. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting that. Or maybe some, passively communicating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or like, hey, you get this and I'll get the next one type And then it's not things, kept track. And then you of. never get a next one exactly. Yeah, I'll pay you back when and we And then get, Emily you know, keeps track of it, but the other person maybe doesn't keep track of it as well. Right. Uh, so it like... Like, if I go out to dinner with with some people, you know, sometimes I'll say, like, I'm buying. I got it. You know, the, right. the check comes. I'm like, oh, I got, I got this. This one's mine. Great. Yep. Yeah. Especially, you know, if we have friends in town or something right. like that. You know, maybe we want to take somebody out and, and treat them to dinner. And, uh, but there are other times where I say, like, how do you want to do this? You want to you just throw two cards down? You want to just split this right down the middle? Right. Because I t- I'll, I'll tell you one thing I don't like to do at, oh, at dinners is, yeah, go through the yeah, receipt. Yeah, okay, and, you and got this. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like. What do you, like, or here's here's the bill. What do you want to pay on it? Okay, yeah. you want to pay. You want to put forty bucks on it. I'll cover the great. Rest. So we're gonna tell the we're gonna tell the server put forty on this card. The rest on this card. Right. Like we'll we'll do it that way. No, I'll I will, and I've given people money. I've okay. given people. I, I've I've gifted people money, and I've loaned people. Have you ever sub- significant had to amounts confront of money? calling in a loan? Yes. Or saying hey, it's it's time to get this yes. even. I'm actually doing it right now. Oh my god. Yeah, not this, like as we speak. The second, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this happening. No, but I, mean, I, I didn't remember. Did, did I forget? Like, I'm in, the, I'm in the middle of of doing it right now. What's that like? I it's, mean, it's, I mean, it is awkward. It's not fun. It's confrontational. 
Yes. Well, or, I mean, I guess, is that and the, the people word? that I, uh, the person that I loan some money to, and it's not like an, an, extra, an extraordinary amount of money. It's not. It's not anything like what Emily is talking about. Right. Um, but it's enough and, and, that it's time. To and the reason up. that I'm doing it at all, it's an amount of money that I probably wouldn't do at all. Except this was a person. That I, I would say we used to be friends. Mm -hmm. We've we've just fallen out of touch over the years. And they contacted me, and and they they were dealing with some stuff. They contacted uh, about ten of our friends. Okay. And and one of those types of things, and they were dealing with some stuff coming out of COVID and and all this kind of stuff. Sure. And said, you know, can you loan me some money, basically like a, a payday loan type yeah. thing? Make some can you loan speed. me some money for a month, and uh, and then I'll get you back? Uh, and like we set a day that they were going to pay me back, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And they just didn't, and and now they've kind of ghosted me and two uh, other people that, that oh, gave the money. That okay. And so that's that's unfortunate. Also, I wouldn't put myself in this situation a if I wasn't prepared to never see that money again. Okay. So you yeah. mentally kind of make peace with if this. I'm if I'm loaning someone like that money yeah like if I'm loaning you money I see you every week right so if I loan you money you keep track I expect that it's going to come like if we right. if we if you say like Jacob can I borrow five hundred dollars I've got this thing I need to do I need five hundred bucks for it uh, I assume it's for your your uh, drug and yeah. sex addiction yeah of course but uh, I'm good for the money it'll, it'll yeah, come yeah. back no, you're gonna you're gonna get it back <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I assume that, and that's that, like if someone were to Google you for a, an yeah. occupational search or something, yeah, that yeah, would yeah. come up, right? It'll come up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. Now, this, go. this is what you've just said will, uh, of course, be attributed yes. to me. Yes. That's important. Jim Jobin's uh, <laughs> severe addictions <laughs> that he that he suffers from. It's pathological. Uh, and I would say that he's fighting them, but he's not. He's, he's just not, made he's peace just <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's made peace with Embezzling money. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if I, if it were if it were that, I would say. Like, great, Jim, what day are you going like, to, I'll loan you $500, yeah. what day are you going to pay me back? Okay. And then that day rolls around. He'll ask. And if you don't bring it up, or if you don't give it to me, then I'll send you a, a polite okay. text message. Okay. Or if we see each other, be like, hey, Jim, uh, today was the day that we agreed on for, for that money. Uh, how are we doing on that? So let me ask you something, because I want to give uh, Emily maybe a taste of, Here's a way to language this. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you've come to somebody and said, Hey, look, you're you're kind of up to seven grand with me, like just on odds right. and ends that you keep saying, Hey, let's split, and they go, Oh my gosh, I acknowledge this, I validate yeah. your list, I want to make this right. But that number's getting so damn big. That's the other thing, too. Yeah. Is so like Emily, you I there are people that I know I have given that much money to. If you give it to them in one lump sum, that's one thing. Right. That's the thing is over the over years of of being friends with some people that I'm friends right. with, I am absolutely positive that in like meals and stuff and whatever, I have given them seven thousand dollars. Sure, yeah. If you were to add it all up, yeah. There was never a question of you're going to pay me back for this. Right. This is just something that we're doing. We're friends, and, and like I'm I'm treating you to to these things. That's fine. Sure. If it was a situation where like th this is the part where Emily is at fault. Okay, is not taking care of this part. Yeah, because like you, you gotta you gotta make sure that a you got that as we said earlier you got that understanding beforehand, and you got a plan beforehand. Sure. And B, if it gets up to that point, you know this person. Yeah. And I'm assuming that this person, because you're because you are loaning them this money for for these different things, I'm assuming this person doesn't have seven grand in the bank ready to go. Right, they can't just you know they can't go to the ATM and get seven grand out or write you a check for it or whatever. It's a lot of money. And it's going to be good. Yes. Yeah, and and I think people are are in fairness quite surprised. You know, I would balk like you know the, the three of us go to bars, we pick up each other's tabs, whatever. Right. Just whoever feels generous that night, it is what it is. I have no idea what the current balance is. No clue. Oh no. And if one of you came to me and said, you know, man, I haven't brought this up, but I have a resentment toward you. You do? What is it? You know, you're down about sixty bucks right now, right? You know, into my pocket. I'd be like, "Oh my god!" Well, like I would be shocked because be like, well, but I'd also I mean, be like, "You've been keeping meticulous count of this." I like, have, I've forgotten to pay Jacob, just like yeah, for studio time, just to make oh, sure yeah. it was him, and, not and, me, <laughs> not me. And so Jim's but, innocent. But I'm not. We the know that like you don't deal therapy. with the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. Know, <laughs> we all know that. Yeah, people I'm who have never aware listened to the show before, know that. But I mean, so I've been on the opposite end of this right. where jacob has texted me like hey dude 
and I'm like, oh shit, yeah. yeah you know, and then right. and, but for me, I like that. Like you like the accountability. I yeah, because if I discover that on my own, knowing that I forgot to pay and he didn't say anything, then I feel guilty. Then it's gonna be then awkward feel, later. Exactly. But right. so I like And that. also my message to you is not confrontational. It's not weird. No. It's like, hey, just a reminder. Uh, this. this, yeah, with a little knife emoji and blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, usually, it's, it's a like... picture of me <laughs> with a broken duct tape me. over my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dangling over a bridge. Like, <laughs> hey, just a reminder. <laughs> I, I don't ex- want to drop Jim, <laughs> but just an X-ray of broken <laughs> kneecaps. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is this is a little on the nose. But can okay, shoe on the other foot. I okay. hate to Tanya Harding you, huh? <laughs> but you owe me. You're giving some money. me a Tanya Harding time here. <laughs> can you shoe on the other foot? Do that. Now that you're getting into so personal training, I have, the day will come when somebody's like, oh, let me get to you. And then it's like, you're three, four weeks out. Are you going to feel uncomfortable kind of coming to them yes. and saying, hey, you got to, let's get the book straight. Here. I actually have a lot to say on this one. Go for it. Okay. So first. You're just going to hire me to do this. Let me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. my, that's my whole solution. <laughs> yeah. Jacob's knuckles. He just goes in there. Hey, friend, you got to so, settle up here. So hey. The, the very yeah. man, first you're looking thing, good, man. You've been working out a lot lately. That's good. That's that, good. You look <laughs> really good. I'm glad you're working out. You got a yeah. trainer or anything? Yeah. Oh, you do have a trainer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you owe that trainer fucking money. <laughs> 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 I, I hope you've gotten real strong. Yeah. <laughs> so, because uh, this lead pipe don't give a shit. <laughs> first off, very similar to Jacob, there are some people in my life that if I loan them money, we have an agreement that it's a loan. Okay. Mm-hmm. But in my head, I just write that off. You, you yes. kind of mentally. I think these. okay, yeah. I'll, if, if I never get this back for whatever reason, if my them. sister came to me and she said, "I need X amount of money," I'm like, "Okay, I'm yeah, good for it. We'll get you know, give it to you. Here you go." In my head, that money is gone. It's a gift. If it comes back to me, that's awesome. Bonus. Okay, but I don't expect. Can it. you yeah. live without resentment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because, because if I you know go that into ahead it, of time. Yeah, if you go into yeah. it eyes open like that, yeah. then you're going to be fine. Even yes. if you've verbally with the other party told them, we agree that this is a loan, but like in your heart, you'll give yourself peace for it. Exactly. Saying, I'm giving myself peace yes. not to keep track of this anymore. Yeah. Right. Because and there, call it a gift. Because there are people in my like life that, that I would, I'm fine. I look at it as a, I guess like a, like a, a tax to maintain that relationship. Right. Okay. You know, like, uh, one of my really good friends, if he needed money, I'm like, okay, if he doesn't pay me back, then it's like, okay, well, the relationship, maintaining that relationship is more important to me. Plus, if I think about, like, ways that this person has helped me out non-monetarily. Exactly. Okay. It, I, it's it's almost kind of like, okay, this is just the relationship we have. I like that. Okay. but But, again, like, as Jacob said, I go into it. With, with that. that expectation. And these are cognitive reframes, just yes. to label what you're doing. Sure. And, yeah. and they're very effective because that relieves you of the burden of keeping tabs yes. and calling it a loan. Instead, you're saying, this is a gift, and if they choose to see it as a loan and get back to me, great. Or, yes. I see this relationship as having... Oh, Tangements. Wow. Quote, unquote, there we go. loans. <laughs> <laughs> payday loans. <laughs> Do you Tangements, need money? Payday loans. <laughs> Call Nick Tangman. He'll just give it to you. Tangman Loan Center. You. You'll agree that it's a loan. That's fine. That's fine with it's him, too. You know what? You take that money, and you do what you need to you with it. You do what you need to You do. know what? Fuck it. Hey, do what you bills. want to with it. Nick Tangman. now. He don't care. Quote, unquote, loans. <laughs> Man loves Best ad yet. Now, now, the other thing that I was going to point out, so I've got real world experience with this too in uh, the guys trips that we take. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So we've done three of them now. The very first one, we like, we split everything. So like one person would pick up the tab and then we would all look at the bill and then we would just Venmo or Cash yeah. App right. money over to Venmo pay our part. Venmo or any of those types of things. Venmo, Cash easier. App, Zell, any of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. The, there, there, there gets to be very quickly very little excuse right. yes, exactly. for not immediately settling up. Do like before you, phone before right you there. stand up from the table, right? Everything is settled. We're moving yeah. on with the night. Right now, this last trip to Austin, it just became too much of a hassle. We just had a couple guys that just volunteered. Like one person's just like, "Okay, I'm picking up all the dinners." 
Oh, wow, okay, there you I'm go. picking up the rental car. Right. Okay, I'm picking up the entertainment. These are approximately yeah. the same value. It's, then, not, it's not exactly balanced then, out, but it's balanced right. out enough that you're all satisfied. Right. Yeah. Or, Nobody feels cheated. Yeah, right. or the other yeah. thing that we would do then is everybody would like kind of put together like a spreadsheet of like, okay, here's everything I spent, divide by five. Here's oh, everything okay. I spent, divide by five. So everybody kind of knew their part. Okay. Right. okay. So there's all sorts of different ways to do it. Now, I'll get to the the Iowa part of me. Yeah. Is, is like, I fucking hate having to talk about money yeah i hate having to ask money uh. ask for money um so to kind of answer your question i went ahead proactively and i took care of this when starting mental fit okay because you do the same thing with your practice and you're the one that kind of taught me how to do this yeah. i've got it set up where i never have to do anything with it yeah Okay, so if you want the service, that's my awesome. Job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's why I send Knuckles over I, here. I, I yeah, pay yeah. a guy; he gets it right. Uh, yeah, but it's it's it, no, we're you, cash only. Yeah, if you <laughs> if you want In the, the bag, service, please. If you it's want nice the watch. service, if you've arranged for it, you've already paid for it. It's already done. Cards are yeah. so it's, yeah. done. it's done. I don't have to. I don't have to be. We don't yeah. have to have those awkward conversations. It's not even going to be like, know. oh, the credit card yeah. got canceled before yeah. the payment yeah. went through or whatever. And you can't because get in debt. You, we have. We have. It's paid. Yeah. It's run. Yes. The cards are run. Everything is done, and then we do the service. Yeah, and 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 the other thing too is like I have to acknowledge because I can relate to Emily too in the sense that like, okay, so I'm talking about like the mental fit personal right. training or the, the, the pod therapy fitness challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. I put a fee for that $30 for two months. Free mm-hmm. if you're a patron for no, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's terrible at collecting funds. $30. <laughs> I, I felt that was reasonable for two months. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My subscription is $30 a month. Yeah. But that's a whole different thing. It's very personalized. This is not, it's for two months. I feel like thirty dollars is fair, but even me talking about it makes me uncomfortable. Right, I get talking it. about it right now. I get it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, because yeah. I do feel like, oh my gosh, I should just do this for free. Right. But then the other part of me is like, why? Yeah, why you're putting in work to to put this service together? Right. I I it and it's something that a friend of mine taught me when we were talking about like negotiating for salaries, mm-hmm. you know, and, and she had said once at w- applying for a job and I was like, I just feel uncomfortable asking for money. And she's like, no, you need to know your worth, mm-hmm. right? You need to know that you are worth this money. And if you are taking much less than that, then that's telling them what you're worth. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and you need to know your and worth and you need you. to fight for it. Exactly. And they will, you know, if you're, if you're, I 20 get, grand less than what you would normally go for. Right. Then now they see you as $20,000 less. I get valuable. angry. Well, I don't want to uh, there's there's another thing I want to come back to Emily as well. But I get angry when people in because my industry is entertainment. Mm-hmm. And so I get very angry with people and like legitimately angry with them. Not like, "Oh, I'm so mad at this person." Like I I will get very angry about it if you underbid what you're doing. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So, and I mean uh, technicians, artists, you know, musicians, uh, bands are notorious for this. They lowball themselves, or they will accept a lowball offer. Okay, instead of just saying, to accept the offer. Oh, just to get on with it. Yeah. Okay. So they will say, like, you know, a, a, a bar might hire a band in Las Vegas, and the going rate might be five hundred dollars for yeah. for that type of band, and they say, well, we can't do five hundred dollars. We can do three hundred dollars. Will you accept three hundred dollars? I will be angry with that band oh. if they then say, "For you, yes, I will accept three hundred dollars." Oh. Because what you've just done now <laughs> is you have you have lowered the average pay rate. I see for everyone in town the who comps does that. Just went yep. down exactly. Yep. Yeah, that is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is the equivalent of like, yo, know, your next door neighbor sold their house for a right. hundred thousand dollars under under you know the right. what they should have sold it for. And it, it affects and you. that drives your home value down. Right. Mm-hmm. Like That's you are really you are actively hurting other people by taking less than market value right. for a, for a service or, or for a product. Now then, uh, something that I will say for Emily is one thing that I do. I have a, a one method that I use for for dealing with this and not uh, either owing or being owed money in the in these types of scenarios is if I'm, say, going out to a, a group dinner, which we do this with my show Absinthe often. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get together and like 20 of us will just go out and eat somewhere. 
and I will make sure before I, even if I have to stop on the way there or whatever it is, I will make sure that I have cash. Okay. I will make sure that I have cash and I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And if my bill comes at the end of the night and my bill is say forty five dollars, I will then put down like sixty or seventy dollars. Right. Tip. I will way overdo it. Right. That way you can't be accused of getting into pennies. There is money for my meal. There it is. Tax is covered. Tip is covered. Right. Everything is good. Here is my share. Done. And if someone says, do you need change? Nope. No, I don't. I don't I don't need change. I don't want change. That's that's mine. You know, whatever is left, it's going to the server. You know, if they, if they get a big tip out of it, awesome. Good on them. Right. You know, that's, that's I'm fine Keeps with that. Keeps it cleaner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it costs a little more, but it does, it gets you out of any of that. Yeah, getting mm-hmm. into the nickels and dimes. Because every time we do, whoever puts that card down, and this is what, this is what made me think of, of Emily with this, Whoever puts their card down almost every single time ends up uh, paying for a larger share than they should have. Usually, yep. yeah, yep. usually. Because everybody else getting nitty-gritty, and they're just picking up all the leftovers. Exa- it know? almost that's always rough. happens. Yeah, Because yeah. so, Jacob put down 70 for a $45 meal, so that means he's covering up he's half He's covering of mine. some of mine. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't have to put in as much. And everybody else cheeps out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too, is I make sure to, like... Like I'll, whoever is paying for it, whoever is putting their they card down on money. it, like yeah. I'm, I walk over to them, yeah. and like, here's for me. Yep. Here you go. That'll take off. Like we're we're all yep. we're all square, and and they'll yeah. usually look at it and go like, well, wait, you had the you had this, this is a lot more than that. So, yep. Right. No problem. Yeah. So I think a couple of things that that I relate to here. So. I definitely, I'm more on the side of I get this feeling, you know, that, that mm-hmm. having a practice, uh, charging was really hard for me in the very beginning. I, I is it through. the money or the confrontation that you don't like? Well, okay, so, so or even the perceived confrontation because a lot of times there's no confrontation at all. So in collecting debts, mm-hmm. that which is different than therapy land, you know, because I, I just relate to you what you were yeah. saying about like yeah, it's it's you know the billing thing could be tricky and it's just I don't want that to be part of this. I want to do my job, you yeah. know, and then let's just make the money thing happen and because I have to have a living, so I'm a professional, yeah. but I also don't even want to bother you with that because I want to focus on you and I don't want my my attention to be seamed in this direction. But coming over to Emily and like this idea of like confronting for the money kind of thing, this debt, mm-hmm. it is it is really hard for me to bring it up because I feel guilty for thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I feel anxious that this other person will be offended that if I bring this up, they'll I will have hurt their feelings or they'll be offended or they may even disagree with me and be like, what? That didn't happen. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. And now I've just I've I've ruffled the feathers of our good day or our you good relationship. You gave me that car. It was a gift, right? And, <laughs> and so, like, I have all of these anxieties yeah. that that give me pause. But I also really relate to these stories. I had a friend that I went to high school with, and as we got through high school and got into college and, and started going through our twenties, he would come to me and just ask for help and and it was my best friend and yeah. so like i didn't mind he'd come to me and say hey man um i can't cover my phone bill. i'm short on rent or whatever it, and it was always very legitimate it'd be sure. like hey my phone bill is x i can't cover it and, and he'd say i can show you the bill and i'd go whoa no no we are we are good friends yeah i do i am not doing that how much money do you need from me yeah 100 bucks would cover it here's a hundo yeah take it not because I'm wealthy. I was a broke teacher in my 20s, but mm-hmm. I was like, you are my brother. Yeah. This is for you. I, I'm say, able to do this. And then he would always insist, I am going to get you back. I am going to get you Great. back. And I would say, awesome. And I kind of took your mentality, Nick, where I'd say to myself, Jim, this is your brother. It's a gift. You just give that freely. And, you know, I, I could also even justify it religiously and be like, you know, freely we receive and freely give. It'll come back to you. It's cool, man. Like, this is this honors God or whatever. And so, like, I would I would be able to sleep at night feeling like it was for some higher good or I had done something good morally, and so I didn't sit around waiting for it. But over the years, this started to pile up. Sure. And it would just be sporadic. It'd be like, oh, man, I'm short on rent. And he knew my nature. He wouldn't. Yeah. A lot of times he wouldn't come right to me and go, hey, man, can you help me out? He just knew my nature, and he would like, oh, gosh, man, I've been so stressed lately. Like, what's wrong, brother? You know, well, man, I'm just... So tight on finances, I had this this speeding ticket or this bill happened, and oh mm-hmm. my gosh, you know, and 
I mean, short on rent. I'm just really hoping my landlord understands. But well, well, how short are you, man? And he just he he knew that I was going to yeah, jump yeah. in and do this, right? And so this was happening you all will, the time. Huh? And the, yeah, yeah, no, it, it works, right? It, you could do this for me. Jacob's short on rent. Oh, let me help you Wait, out, man. You don't rent. Yeah, you own your <laughs> home. So at one I point, I rent things. <laughs> <laughs> so this got really bad, and and I started becoming. By the way, no one is surprised. That yeah, this yeah, is yeah. No, I became. Yeah. No, yeah. it gets way worse than you think it does. So this is kind of confessions. Yeah. So at one point, he is talking to me, and he's like, "Oh my gosh!" Now here's the other problem. I didn't know about addiction back then. Mm-hmm. My friend had alcohol problems and gambling problems, and I didn't know about that. I just knew about these patterns. Yeah. But he was gambling the money away. He was right. drinking it away. He was living frivolous. Was it suspicious to you? Did you feel like he should have more money than he did? It always felt, it made sense at the time. Okay. And, and I felt like it would be offensive to ask questions. So, so no red flags uh, were going off in your head? No, because if my friend even admitted that there was a problem, I didn't want to make him uncomfortable by saying, well, wait, wait a minute, what happened to your money? You know, show me your bank account. How much money do you have on you right now? Right. Like, no, 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 whoa, whoa, no, that feels so itchy to me. So I would just try. I have this martyr couple. He's like, rush to the rescue. Like, gotta mm-hmm. help him. So at one point, he's like, oh my gosh, um, my car got repoed. My car got repoed. They, and he was hiding it from the repo people for a while because he was behind in payments. And then, uh, you know, I knew about this. And, and then he was also coming to me around that time and saying, hey man, could you help me with my, my phone and things like that? And then finally, he's like, you know, oh, my car got repoed. What am I going to do? How am I going to go to work? How am I going to do all these right. things? I gave him my car. So I was like, oh, my gosh, what are you going to do? You know what, man? Take my car. Not to borrow. I signed it over. I ah. was like, you need a car. And I'm part of a two-car household. I have a spouse who has a car. And we can figure it out. What'd she think about that? <laughs> Just side note. <laughs> we had some conflict. She was a big fan, huh? <laughs> I've grown. I've uh-huh. grown a lot. I was very young when this sure, happened. Sure. I was probably like 21. Yeah. Uh, but I gave him a vehicle. And, and, you know, the bigger story at the time was I'd been saving up and I was going to try to get another vehicle and I was almost ready for that. And so I was really close. And there was a lot of moving pieces. So I was going to get access to a new vehicle. But certainly, this this vehicle I had to give was an asset. Yeah. I could have traded it in. Yeah. I could have sold it for Blue Book. Yeah. Whatever. It was worth something. It was worth something to me, and yeah. I didn't have a lot. But I gave him this vehicle. And, you know, he was like, oh, my God, brother, you're the best friend I've ever had. I can't believe, you know, tears in his eyes. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you're the best friend I've ever had. And like, you know what, man? I just want you to be healthy and safe and take this car. So this went on for a very long time. Until finally, Eddie, who you've met, Uh was our other very good friend. The three of us were kind of three amigos. He kind of is the one who had an intervention with me, where he kind of sat me down. He said, listen, you idiot. Like, you're not the only one he's calling. Yeah. Right. I just figured it out and, like, stopped. And now he's just going to you. And, like, instead of making car payments, he's doing this or that or the other thing. And that's what started to piece it together. And I started having to learn boundaries and Uh and kind of, like, letting, no, I'm not available for that. No, I can't do that. Yeah. And that was very hard for me to learn. You know, the, those boundaries of saying, I'm not available for this. I don't have that for you. Well, what do you mean? Don't you have it? I do, but it's not for you. Uh-huh. It's for other things. That money is spoken for. You know, I have other things. So it became really, really odd. Then the day came where this friend uh, was in a an accident, a, a car accident. Mm-hmm. And he's he was fine, but he did get an injury. And the other motorist was absolutely dead to rights at fault. Okay. So, there was a very significant insurance windfall that just came to him. It was like the lawyers were like, nope, we're screwed. Uh, we're just going to write you a huge here's check. Here's all the money. Yeah, here's all the money. Don't even call a lawyer. And, yeah. and the insurance company's like, just take this pot of money. And yeah, he's yeah. like, cool. It was a life-changing amount of money. For Got him. it. He calls me, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, he grew up with me. He's called me Jimmy. And he's like, Jimmy, you know, this all happened. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm thinking to myself, honestly, that's terrific for you. I'm so glad you're finally going to be stable. That's yeah. all I've ever wanted for you. This is life-changing. Congratulations, my friend. And he's like, I need to come to your house because I need to show you something. And I'm like, okay, do you want to tell me what it is? He's like, no, it's important. And I, and I really I, – I need to come in person. Can I come to you today? And I was like, okay. 
And and so like I'm like, yeah, buddy, you know, great. And so I'm hanging up and I'm thinking, wow, I wonder what's and then it occurs to if me. If I were a meaner person, this is where I'd do another ad drop. <laughs> probably would. You're I better am. than that though, aren't you? I am. The high road. I am, yeah. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And you know, I wasn't hoping for anything, but it occurred to me. Like I'm trying to figure out what is it coming over here for? What's this all about? And I'm like, oh my gosh. All those things, all the times, and and I'll and the car, you know, and like right. anything I've ever done, I'll bet you he's gonna Oh, this is what you're telling yourself. I'll bet you he's gonna show up <laughs> and I'll bet you he's gonna have a check. Yeah. And it's gonna be like, hey man. Here's a briefcase wanna, full of hundred dollar yeah, bills. I mean, you're you have a life changing sum of money. Yeah. And, and like yeah. you could make it even with me with I don't know, four grand, you know, like it right. was, wasn't a great car I gave you, you know. So yeah. like I mean it could just even up, you know. And and I had just had a new baby. And so I was broke as a joke. Yeah. Really struggling. Like, really struggling. Uh, just and so for that. new listeners, when Jim says he had a new baby, he had a new baby for dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah, were yeah, very yeah, expensive. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and cut to Jim's bu- baby buffet. <laughs> yeah, you can get them uh, here yeah. in Vegas, yeah. but they are not cheap. Come on down to Soup Plantation and Baby Buffet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, senior discount. So I was broke as a joke. I was really struggling. And he, and he knew that. And we would talk, and I would tell him how hard it was being a new mm-hmm. dad and, and being this very poor teacher and really struggling and just all the bills are piling up with a new baby, and I was, I was absolutely broken. And I was like, oh, my God, this is really happening. He came to my house on his new motorcycle. <laughs> you got to show you, show, you, show, you, show you this uh, new motorcycle. That there. he paid cash for. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he was like, dude, check this out. Yeah. And I was like, Wow. It's so cool, man. I think I know where this goes. And then you're like, can you give me a ride? And he's yeah. like, no. Nah. No, nah, I'd have to charge you for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just, I remember just my heart sank when he pulled up on this bike. And I realized, oh, it's the bike. And then he's like, because he's not giving me a bike. I'm not, I don't break yeah. motorcycles. Right. And then it all clicked. Because he was really into motorcycles. And so he's like showing me it. He's like, look, it's amazing. It's limited edition. It costs so much money. He's like so flagrantly spending. Right. And, like, also just, like, you're going to come full circle and need to borrow from me again. My broke ass. It's, like, yeah. trying to feed yeah. my family. So I just remember being so heartbroken that day. And, you know, but then feeling very ashamed for being heartbroken and being, like, well, I shouldn't expect that of me. Didn't I really give him these things? What's that feeling? It, it, it is that terrible feeling yeah. of I have been used. Yeah. Well, it was that. and it, But it was also the sense of, like, I felt ashamed because after he left, and I just felt like, wow, I really thought that wasn't what was going to happen. And then I felt like this deep conviction of like, you know what, Jim? Shame on you. Your friend needed help back then. Right. And now you greedily want to be paid back because your help wasn't sincere back then. Mm-hmm. You're a bad person. And so then I struggled with that, where I was like, I'm a bad person you, for even wanting him to make Do you see that even. differently now? I see it now, yeah. I see it yeah. now as as you know, codependent. I, I see it as enabling. I see it as well. Very not only bad that, boundaries. but like, I don't think it was wrong to have that feeling. Right. No, because yeah, no, I, I absolutely not. Yeah, be, I think you're perfectly in the right because he was struggling. You helped him. Right now, you're struggling. He doesn't no help problem. you. But the thought it's didn't not a two way street. Occur exactly. to him. Like, and if I would have brought it up, if I would have said, "Hey, man, I kind of thought today you were going to do this." I don't know what he would have done. Honestly, I think he would have been the kind of guy that would have been like, oh, I thought those were gifts, man. Yeah. I didn't know that you were expecting to get paid back. Well, I guess I'll go fetch your money. Like, I think that's how he would have responded. I'd have been like, well, no, no, our friendship matters more to me than that. No, no, it's not what it is. I would yeah. have felt guilty for even asking. Yeah. So it's very complex for me. And, like, I resonate so much with Emily. And, you know, even the business thing, which you and I both as, you know, private practice people – have had to go, you know, get our, our, earn our living. You know, we sing for our supper. We do a, a job that we're professionally trained to do that's special, and you've requested it, and we provide it. Mm-hmm. And there's compensation for that. Money changes hands. Yeah. And, like, we try our best to make it a non-issue by just planning for it. But in Emily's case, she started feeling weird about even getting paid, you know? And if a friend asked for help, like, oh, I'll make you this shirt or whatever. I, I totally just resonate with Emily. The things that have helped me the most really are things you're both talking about. I think from Jacob's perspective, kind of making it clear and, and also having a timeline attached to Have that. a plan. Yeah. Having a plan, not just saying, oh, get me when you get me. Yeah. If somebody's demonstrated they can't do that, they can't be trusted with that, then the next time you sponsor their night out or buying them something, right. it's, are you going to hit me in a week? 
you know, or can did you want to get that back to me tomorrow? Right. Or like, did, you want to PayPal me right now? Did you want to PayPal me now, or did you want to set a reminder to do that on the first or whatever? Yeah. But like, I like that 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 is a directness that gets ahead of the problem right. that yeah. I think is meaningful. And I like what you said, Nick, about reframing it. That if you're gonna do it, mentally telling yourself, "I choose to mentally make this a gift." So that I am not keeping track or I choose to see this as an investment in friendship and this is me contributing. The last thing I would give you, Emily, is I do think that there is a danger to keeping a rolling tab of every odd and end. If if a friend comes to me and says, can I have hundred dollars for purpose? That is clearly a loan to me. If if Jacob and I walk into the gas station together and he grabs a Pepsi and I grab a Red Bull and we walk up to the counter and I say, just throw it in. Right. I shouldn't be keeping track of that. You're not, you're not keeping up with that $1.78. Well, I shouldn't, even if it's $20. Right. This rolling tab scenario creates really more of an emotional debt yes. than it's a financial debt. Yes. And I'm allowing that to become something that hovers between us. And it isn't always spoken clearly. And it isn't always clear. And, and I'm allowing that to become something I'm keeping tally of. And I don't know that that's fair to Jacob. I don't know that right. that's fair to the other party because it is ambiguous. Like, I'll tell you this. The the person that I am uh, dealing with right now to, to get money back from a, a loan, and, I mean, I, I say that I'm dealing with this. I'm not doing much. I, I, I've sent, like, a couple of a couple of uh, messages. Yeah. That, that's that's what I'm Wrapped doing. around a stone yeah. that you've thrown through. The exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm doing, and that's the, that is the extent You're of, of what I'm going up. to You're do. You're broaching the topic. Yes. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, too. This person is a a previous friend. Mm-hmm. I don't see us being close friends in the future. So I'm not worried about that. Right. If this person says, like, Here, here's your fucking money. Right. And now leave me alone. I, I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, we, we haven't had a whole lot of contact in the last 15, 20 years. Right. Uh and we're just going to continue not having... Co- okay, I'm fine with that. Sure. I can right. live with that. Very different if it had been a close friend. Close friend, I'm not doing anything. Okay, you're not asking for anything back. No. Not unless... Even not, if they have a bad habit. No, if we have if we have something established, we have a plan and everything else, then I'm going to remind them of it. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to bring it up in, in that regard. Right. And that's... Honestly, like with this person, that's the only reason I'm doing it now. Right. Is because we we had an agreement and it was and that like that bothers me more than the money does. Right. The fact that the fact that this person said, I'm gonna pay you back on this day, uh, but can I borrow the money until this day? I said, Yes. Yeah. That's like we had an agreement, we had a plan, the plan all set was for there. Us. You're just yeah. following up. And like and, and they didn't hold up their end of it. Right. And so I'm just saying, like, okay, well now, like you lied to me. As well, right? Purposely or not, that, does, that doesn't really matter in this scenario. That that bothers me more than being out the the. I think it's like three hundred bucks. Sure. For that, that I'm that I'm out to this person. Right. Like, if I'm out three hundred bucks, I'm out three hundred bucks. Now, in Emily's case, you got debt from it. You've got twenty something thousand. And if to, it's a rolling debt person. where it's like, hey, they added a Pepsi and they got some toothpaste. Yeah. And this one time we went out to dinner and they bought fries and I didn't get fries, but I paid for their fries. I get worried about that, Emily, because I don't know that that's right. I appreciate there's a nickel and dime. I appreciate there's arithmetic. I appreciate that somebody probably nodded and said, I'll get you back or whatever. I appreciate that you are correct. Right. Technically. I believe you are right. Right. But I, I don't, don't believe that's healthy helpful. for you. Yes, I. that's it. I don't think it's healthy, and I also don't want to villainize the other people. And you didn't in your letter. You said, nope. look, they're not bad people. But I appreciate the ambiguity. And honestly, a lot of times when boundary violations happen, we have to ask ourselves, if I failed to create the clear message uh-huh. of what I was hoping for or would have been keeping track of, and you stepped over that line... This, in some ways, is my penalty for not being clear. Yes. You know, in some ways, I have to eat the cost as this was my penalty. This is my fee and that's for the thing. having if Emily, poor If Emily wrote in and said, I'm out a grand. Right. I'm out $1,000 on this. I would really have different, I would, I would be, I'd be saying different things to But her. when we're getting into the 20s of thousands. That, like, and, and she's saying that that is, is a significant amount of money for, for right. her and, and the way she lives. And the... She is in debt because of it. Boy, no, now that's a bigger problem that you do. I, I feel like you do have to kind of confront. What? If it was a, if it was a thousand dollars or less or something like that, I would say like that's that's your penalty and you've learned the lesson. Right. And I, 
this actually kind of leads to the last two things that I've got on this, okay. Emily. Number one is you can't give away what you don't have. No, yep. Yeah. And I think that's a very valuable lesson. And I, I get it for people like you, like me, who I, I think we're kind of cut from the same cloth where we just will sacrifice anything to help people out. Mm-hmm. Right. We got to stop doing that. Right. We you you cannot like if you've got food on your plate and you're not going to eat the whole thing and somebody else wants a little bit, it's perfectly fine to give them what you're not going to eat. But you can't give somebody the entire plate. Right. And you can't give people stuff that you don't have. If you if somebody needs seven thousand dollars and you've got two thousand dollars, right, you you're going to give them that too, and then you're going to right. run up a debt for the other five. No. Absolutely not. Right. No. You, you you can't do that. You have to take care of yourself first and i know it feels selfish but it's for self-preservation you have to do that and the other thing too that i was going to the last point i was going to make was you know people are teaching you about themselves listen listen yeah Yeah. so i mean this whole thing about like patterns you know as jim was talking about like okay did this this one time and then it happened again and then it happened again Mm -hmm. No, we got to recognize those patterns. I loan you money this first time under these conditions. If those conditions are broken, when you come back, I don't give you more money until this first thing is settled. Right. You know, and it's, it makes it uncomfortable and I get it, but I think that's, that's how that you is to key. And, and I don't think that note got hit enough in all the answers, but that's huge. If it, you know what, it's like the old saying, right? Fool me once. You know, shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Yeah. And if we keep doing this and I keep allowing you to do it, I'm the one who's, you know, at some point going to have to own some of this. Now, yeah. I agree with you, Jacob. I mean, at some point we're talking 20s of thousands of dollars. Obviously, it's life-changing amounts of debt. Right. Confront them. You know, go back to them and see what kind of support or resource or payment plan and I would, set up. And I would bet, and I'm making some assumptions here, but I would bet that this friendship is not going to survive you knowing that they owe you this money. Yeah. Right. Right. And so... I don't see that you're risking anything right. other than possible upside right. by going to them and saying, like, look, I'm, I'm in debt because of money that I've given you. We, we, we have to figure something out here. Yeah. It, it, like, you know, payment, like, if you can start giving me $500 a month, right. whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we gotta we gotta figure something out and we'll get this we'll get this knocked out. And hey, you know, if that means that, you know, when we're going out to dinner, you just want to pick up the tab. Right. And we'll and we'll take Start that off. It you off. know, we'll take that off the balance. We'll right. like we'll we'll do we'll be we can be creative about it. You can have right. a, a really friendly but still upfront and direct conversation about this. Yeah. Because kind of getting back to the very beginning, it's just fucking money. Yeah, yeah. We right. deal with it every day. Don't be worried about talking about it. It's not right. an icky thing that, to to discuss. It's just a thing. Yeah, and I'm good with you also, Emily, disclosing your discomfort. And, yeah. and I'll do that. Oh, yeah. I'll let people know, hey, I I hate these topics. I feel super uncomfortable about it. Yeah. Um, if I'm out of line or if you feel that I'm saying something unfair to you, please let me know. Here's the way I see it. I'm open to being corrected. Mm-hmm. If this is the way it is, I'd like us to come to a solution together. Right. Can we talk about that? Or like, here's the here's the number I think it is. Right. If you think it's a different number, we can talk right. about that. Like we, you, and be prepared for feedback because they might say some of this kind of seems petty, and I thought you were taking me on a date, but apparently, you know, or whatever. And like, okay, and if you nickel and dime them over twenty years or something like that, then we got to talk about it, you know. But yep. here's the old thing, right? Suffering is inevitable. Mm-hmm. You're suffering no matter which path you choose. You're yep. going to suffer in the silent agony of this problem and the debt and the effect and the shadow it looms over your relationship. Yeah. Or you're going to suffer with hard and awkward conversations and payment plans and figuring something out. I mean, if, and I'm I'm making the assumptions that I'm making based on myself. Right. If somebody owed me twenty grand, and and I felt that I was owed that money. Right. Then my friendship is not going to survive. Right, and I can I'm just see, saying, like, I can I, see scenarios survive, where a person... It's not going to survive with right. me. Right. I'm the opposite of that, and I think, you know, Nick's probably somewhere in the middle. But, like, for me, I I didn't do that. I haven't demonstrated that mm-hmm. in life, that if there's a money thing, I'm more likely to bury it and forgive it to, in, in, a, in, a, in my mentality of thinking, yeah. this is me preserving the friendship. But if I were talking to my therapist about that, they might challenge me deeply and say, you know, Jim... 
what are you preserving? Is this an equitable and, and nourishing that's friendship? Because I'm not going to yep. be mad yep. about the money. I'm and gonna... with that friend I had, it was not. Right. And if my therapist existed back then, they probably would have tried to help me see, what are you scared to lose? Right. This is one-sided, and it's unhealthy for you anyway. You're not cherished or I'm not going to be upset about the money. I'm going to be upset about the betrayal. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be upset about you lying to me. Yeah. And that means that if I blow up this friendship, that's fine with me. Mm, because yeah. you've already kind of fired I'm not, I'm not going to be... I don't mean it's fine with me and that I'm going to be happy about it. No, but you feel at peace with what's I, going on. I can on. accept that, yeah, though. I just acceptance. Yeah. It's a tricky one, Emily. Yeah. It really is. It's not fun. We're weighing in with good perspectives, and hopefully you got a lot of good advice, mostly from those guys. I don't have a lot, because I just I still live this nightmare. But <laughs> here we are. Well, speaking of money, Emily, people... I would suggest borrowing money from Jim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's the solution. Just come to me and say, hey, I could really use it. Oh, yeah. here's a car. So <clears throat> speaking of money, there's a bunch of folks that support us with their money. Uh, because they want a show like this to exist, and they make it possible for all of you to hear it. And so we're so grateful for that. Um, but we want to welcome folks at patreon.com slash therapy, and we always try to acknowledge you. And just a reminder, hey, if you don't like ads, go down there, grab the show. You can just, with the click of a button, pipe it into the same podcast app you're using right now. Super easy. Super easy. You get no ads, and you get all the extra content you can hear about a lot of the things we reference later in the show is inside jokes. We were actually just, it's a continuation of something we were just talking about. And also deep dive topics. We've got a, a series on ADHD that is releasing this month. A lot of great stuff that is uh, flowing through those channels. And so as we get to the end of the year, there's a yearbook to sign on there to share your stories about how this show has affected you and your own journeys. A lot of fun stuff. And of course, access to the Discord as well. So patreon.com slash therapy is where you grab all those extra goodies. But we want to welcome some new therapists. Also, the before we do that, oh, go ahead. Uh, mentalfitpersonaltraining.com. Dot com. If you want to do the pod therapy fitness challenge, uh, January and February, uh, enrollment is open. So you want to sign up for that? Go ahead. Go to mentalfitpersonaltraining.com. Enrollment is open. Click on the little button up at the top that says pod therapy fitness challenge, and you can sign up. Fitness challenge. In your pod. And we got some new Therapals. So welcome to Faye. And I'm going to say mm. uh, Louis Clotire. Clotire. Yeah, I'm going to give you that. I, Louis, I think that that's right. I think it's Louis. I think, I, well, this is definitely, here's the problem. Uh, it says Louis Clotier. Clotier. But if you're going Cloutier. to. But it's that's it. Be. Because once you go Clotier, you then have you to have go to back go now and you have to say Louis. Yeah. Yeah, because you're Frenchifying the, the end. You got to Frenchify the front because Louis is a royal. You don't want to half name. Frenchify. You never half Frenchify. Always full French. Full French fry. Never half ass a French fry. Full ass a French fry. Cloutier. and thank you, Faye. Thank you for joining. Yes, and welcome new theropods. Welcome Christopher Digersi. You gonna go with me on Frenchify. that? Frenchify. Digersi. <laughs> Is that how the French talk? <laughs> Nailed it. Present, everybody was pronounced <laughs> croissant. Croissant. Yeah, Christopher <laughs> Croissant. De Guarci. Yeah, I'm going with that. And Nico. And we have a new Therodactyl, Pickett. Pickett. Welcome. And a new Thera producer. Welcome to a sad boy. And it's sad S A D. And uh, Sad Boy also explains in the Discord uh, that it's a pun. <laughs> that that uh, Sad Boy has a story and, and so shared that in there. So awesome. Welcome, Sad Boy. And of course, uh, we always want to thank our Thera partner, Dirty B, who is the presenting sponsor of the show. And thank you to our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club, those Thera producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Dawn, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Cindy Ash, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Newstick, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley, Slap in Your Face, Polygon, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Myra, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder, Cougar, Falcon, Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, hey Oscar Swanros, and a sad boy. And if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited. And why wouldn't Did you, you say cut? Yeah, Did uncut. You say, okay, I thought, I thought he said something. No. Sorry, sorry. What did no. you think he said, Jim? No, you know what? 
I must have misheard him. I won't make All that right. mistake twice. <laughs> and enjoy our spontaneous side projects. Go to patreon.com slash therapy. And thank you for supporting Mental Health. Well, that's all the time we've got for this week's session. Extra episode, extended episode. We want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast. And thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We do appreciate it. Remember, pot therapy is something to keep all to yourself. Share the episode and tag us on the socials when you do. It's at pot therapy guys on Twitter, slash pod therapy on Facebook, and at Pod Therapy Guys on Instagram, and don't forget that extra stuff at patreon.com slash therapy. Do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangeman. I am Jim Jobin. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next week. You know, Jobin is actually a French surname, I believe. It's very common in Canada. A lot of Jobins in Canada. And the name came uh, from my grandfather's stepdad. My, my grandfather was adopted. Our original name was something else. And uh, the, the dad was...